Hey everybody, my name is Duchess, and this is where we talk about true crime and missing cases. And tonight, we're going to talk about Sebastian Rogers, who's been missing for 21 days. And the last time that we spoke about Sebastian Rogers, Chris and Katie Proudfoot joined us on panel to kind of give us some information about Sebastian missing and what their thoughts and feelings were. And I really appreciate them taking the time to come over to speak with me. Um, it was kind of unexpected. However, uh, someone in their family had reached out to me that knows someone in my family, and I had no idea. Uh, that it was going to turn out the way that it has. Because anytime someone reaches out to me, I'm always happy to make a missing flyer and to share out a missing case. Because that's what we do here at Duchess Discussions, is we share out information to help bring the missing home to their families. It was a very interesting conversation, and there's a lot of talk on social media. Lots of YouTube creators are covering this case um, and talking about me <laughs> for some reason. And it's not about me. It's about finding Sebastian Rogers. So I want to just make sure that we stay focused on the task at hand because Sebastian is still missing. And tonight I have two special guests with me that um, we work together as a team because we can accomplish more in this community when we work together and help each other. 
And the three of us, well, we don't always see eye to eye on these cases. We all have our differing opinions about things, but we still are friends and we're still respectful to each other um, because this is not an echo chamber and we don't think the same um, about several cases. And that's okay. It's okay not to, you know, have to believe what somebody else thinks about something. You may have your own thoughts and feelings whenever you see a missing family member speak about their loved one or when you hear the case um, discussed on different channels or when you see these cases being talked about in Facebook groups. Everybody processes that information differently. But here at Duchess, we like to stick to the facts. Um, and if it's my opinion, I'll always tell you, in my opinion, and I'm only, always just speaking for myself, and that doesn't mean that it's a fact. It just means that it's my opinion. And of course, Crystal and Arctic Fox have their own opinions, as well as people here in this very chat. You're entitled to have your own opinion, and you're welcome here. But I do want to remind you that there is a set of guidelines that we have here at Duchess, and that entails, I don't want my chat attacking the panel, and I don't want the chat to be attacking other people in the chat. I don't want there to be bashing of creators in the chat because it takes the focus off of the case that we're discussing. If you have a different opinion or you have a question, as long as you're respectful, you can ask that. You can, you're welcome to, to, to say what you need to say, but I don't want people to be disrespectful to each other because it makes it very difficult to have a productive live stream when that happens. And so I really appreciate every single one of you for understanding the guidelines. It's just how it helps me to be able to get you guys the information that matters to help find missing people. And we want to help get out Sebastian's information, the accurate information, because I'm here for the missing. I'm not here to take sides when we're trying to find, if it's a missing child, that's the side that I'm on, the missing child. Sebastian is out there somewhere. And somebody knows where this child is. And I'm going to go over here and I want to share his poster. Um, this is a flyer that I saw that was made by The Missing Truth. If you're not following them over on Facebook, please do go follow them. Um, this is a fantastic flyer. Um, Sebastian Rogers' last contact. Well, it could have been February 25th, but it also could have been February 26th. You know, it's really kind of unknown what the exact time that Sebastian might have walked away or whatever transpired during those hours. It's thought to be between 12 midnight and 6 a.m. of the 26th. This is an Amber Alert, guys. This is an endangered child alert out of Tennessee. Sebastian Rogers, missing from Hendersonville, Sumner County, Tennessee. Sebastian is 15 years old. He is 5 feet 5 inches tall and weighs 120 pounds. His eyes are brown and his hair is actually a sandy light brown. And he was last seen wearing a black long sleeve shirt. And we're going to talk more about that tonight. Um, with black sweatpants that has a white stripe down the side and glasses, no shoes. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation released an Amber Alert for the missing 15 year old Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers 
who went missing on February the 25th of 2024. According to the TBI, Sebastian was last seen near Stafford Court in the Hendersonville area on Sunday. Initially, there was an endangered child alert for Sebastian due to the fact that he is autistic. But now there is an Amber Alert. And there has been a lot of information that has transpired over this last week. And we are going to talk about it. If you see this flyer, if you see any flyer, any information shared by the TBI, by Sumner County Sheriff's Department, whoever it is that is talking about Sebastian Rogers, please share that information because you never know when somebody's going to see it. Moderators, I want to thank you so much for being here tonight. Guys, if you have any questions in chat, feel free to ask one of the moderators. Michelle is the admin. If you have any questions, feel free to ask the mods. They'll be able to help you out because I don't always see everything in chat. Now, we are going to go over the TBI newsroom statement tonight. And later on, Sebastian's stepfather will join us on panel. And Crystal Artic and I want to ask several questions of Chris tonight. Some of those questions have been asked before, but there are a lot of people that are just coming into this case that may not know everything. They may not have heard all of the interviews. They can't get back to all of it. So we're just going to kind of go ask some questions that may have already been asked. And there may be some questions asked that we've seen in Facebook groups. There may be questions asked that we've seen posted on YouTube chats, talked about in YouTube live streams. Um, and he will also be taking questions from the chat. Now, if your question is not discussed by Chris or answered, it may be because that question was already asked previously in the live stream. And if he has already answered it during this live stream and somebody asked the same question, we're not going to revisit it. So I just want to make everybody aware from the get-go. I don't want anybody to feel like they're being left out. Because we have to keep this short. I can't be here till 4 a.m. But he does want to try to answer your questions if he is able to do so. If it's a question that law enforcement says that he is able to answer. Because he wants to clear the air. And I just ask that y'all be respectful. And that's not coddling anybody. That's just... It's what I would ask of anybody that's a guest on my panel, regardless of who you are, whether I agree with you or not. And I think that's only fair. And I really appreciate all of y'all being here. I just want to go over here to the chat and say um, and thank my moderators and everyone for being here. We have so many people here tonight. Hey, Justin, thank you for being here. Single mom, true crime, thank you for being a member. Hey, flies. Hey, Libby. Hey, Michelle. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for putting that in the chat. Um, if you have any information, please call 1-800-TBI-FINE or S Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 615-451-3838. Of course, Arctic Fox is here on panel. Hey, Libby. BHB2. And by the way, that is blue-haired bingo babe. If you're not subbed up, you definitely need to to get over there. Hey, Allie, thank you so much for being here. Whistle while you lurk. So good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, the real Brenda. Five Cane Canes. So good to see you here. Hey, Amy in Boston. Wisdom Speaks. David Bryant. 
Uh-oh, anyone disagrees with him? They're catching these cyber hands. Hey, Victoria. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us tonight. Does anybody have any particular questions about how this stream is going to go before we get started, you know? Um, because I want you guys to be able to ask your questions. Hey, Cotton Candy. So glad to see you. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Ginger Snaps. Hey, I see you. So good to see you. When evil entered. I know. It's. I really thought that Sebastian would be home by now. I really did. And that's why I'm so glad we still have the billboards up. A little bird told me that there was a YouTube creator who's not happy that people sent me money to put up the billboards. But, you know, respectfully, we're just going to have to disagree because Sebastian's face needs to be out there. And unfortunately, I'm not a millionaire. So I have some very nice people on my team that sent me money to be able to put those billboards up. And they are still up and we're going to keep them up. Um, we extended them from Tuesday and I think I'll be able to run them till Friday now. So um, I just want to give a shout out to Arctic Fox and Crystal and Allie. Thank you so much. I really appreciate y'all and the flies. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, Justin, our opinions will never change the outcome of what happened. So it's always best to respectfully disagree. That's right, because we're guys, we're not going to always agree about everything, but it doesn't mean that we have to be hateful or anything like that. I mean, what kind of world would we live in if we all agreed about every single thing? Hey, Kiko, I am very worried. I'm very worried. A lot of time has passed. Hey, the real Brenda. Very good to see you. Hey, Jaded. Good to see you. Hey, Doodlebug Fart. Good to see you. Go Titans Go 82. Thank you for being here. Now, I understand there was a vigil tonight that was held in Clarksville. Somebody did ask me. If the parents were planning to go, I guess, you know, the stepdad and the mom. Um, but I am not privy to that information. They may have had other plans. They may not have even known about it. Um, I encourage people, if you're planning a vigil for Sebastian, to reach out to the parents yourself to let them know about it. Because they may not be active in some of the groups. I really don't know um, any information, but maybe Chris will be able to answer that um, when he comes up. Stevie, thank you so much for being here. I think it's his happy, sweet smile that is just really breaking my heart. I really want him to be okay out there and to be found soon. All the love to his family. Stevie, thank you. Thank you so much. Karen S., no one is cleared until officials say they're cleared. Thank you for being here, Karen. Hey, Elizabeth, glad to see you here. Please remain focused on the topic. No, this is not the bio dad, although he was invited. And if he would like to join, he's more than welcome to do that. Hi, Brandy. Thank you for being here. Hey, Terry Dean. Well, Cluminati, you never know. She says, Duchess, is there a reason you said someone knows where Sebastian is? I don't know. How could that be if he walked off? Well, if he walked off, isn't it possible that somebody has seen him? I mean, I really don't know the circumstances. I mean, they think that he may have walked out of the house, but if nobody saw him, we don't really know exactly what happened. But even if he did walk off, don't you think that somebody would see him somewhere eventually? I mean, it seems probable, right? I don't know. It's really hard to say.
Cat's Eye said, has the neighbor's homes been searched? Not being nosy, but that's where I hid when I ran away at 13. That's a very good question, Cat's Eye. And, you know, law enforcement doesn't have to tell us everything that's going on. So it's it's a good possibility. Um, I think a, another important thing is... Um, I saw a lot of people that was very anxious, which is why we're going over the TBI newsroom update, that the Secret Service was involved. Um, and just to let everyone know, I'm going to actually show you guys a little clip here. And I just know this because, well, I cover missing cases. And the Secret Service actually works right here. You can see this screenshot that I have right here. This is from the secretservice.gov. They work specifically with the NICMIC website, which is the National Center for the Missing and Exploited Children, because they have a lot of um, help in forensics, and they also work a lot with technology. So it could be that TBI uh, called them in to get their expertise on some of the camera footage. Like, you know, so it's very possible. A lot of people said they didn't understand why Secret Service was involved, but that's kind of a standard protocol for some of these cases. So um, I just wanted to make sure that everyone realized that that wasn't just some thing that just happened. Like they probably called them in for that reason, because they do work a lot on children's cases. So, uh, Bob, when he joins us, that's when he'll be here. It will um, probably be sometime after 10. He had a prior engagement. So that's why we are talking about Sebastian's case before he joins us, um, because this live stream is about finding Sebastian, and we want to make sure that we share out his information. Yes, Justin, it doesn't get more secret than the Secret Service. That's exactly right. Bob, I wish I could answer that for you, but, you know, we can't really understand what parents' emotional state of mind really is. You can look at someone and maybe not have a complete understanding of what they are going through. Um. But I appreciate you being here. Hi, Pamela. Thank you so much for being here. Hello, Alicia P. TBI released a statement saying people's homes were searched. It's in their last statement a couple of days ago. And it may be in the update that I'm getting ready to share. Hey, beautiful sunflower. Thank you for being here. Kim Smith said, kids don't just vanish into thin air. Someone somewhere knows something. That was kind of my inclination when I answered it the way that I did, because I just feel like you just never know if somebody's going to see something. We can't just assume that no one has seen anything. Miss Curvy, hey, darling, I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing okay. Thank you so much for your super chat. The work that you do, Miss Beautiful, is fantastic. Be very proud. Hi, everyone. It's 1.56 a.m. Got to sleep. Got work tomorrow. Miss Kirby, God bless you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm going to apply that to Sebastian's um, billboard. So I really appreciate you and I hope you have a good night. So I want to go over here real quick. Arctic Crystal, do you want to um, do you want to speak to anything while I get this document pulled up that we're going to go over? I mean, I, I have questions, too, but that's that's what we're here to find out. Um, the one thing I don't think that it does any any good is to attack people. Um, sometimes just asking will go a long ways. So I'm hoping the questions that I have, you know, we can get some answers for, and hope hopefully a lot of the speculation gets cleared up. I agree. Uh, making accusations and putting all kinds of speculation without facts to back it up all over social media does not do anything to help bring Sebastian home. And we've seen this in numerous cases. We've seen it in Michael Monkey Vaughn's case in particular, where Brandy and Tyler were attacked on end for over a year. And there are still people trying to accuse Brandy and Tyler of having something to do with Monkey's disappearance. Even after law enforcement has said that they are pretty much cleared. 
So let's just stick to the facts of what's been put out by the TBI and law enforcement, and we'll ask the questions uh, that need to be asked, but there's no need to, you know, put false information out there without anything to back it up. I agree. Hundred percent. Cluminati says, Michelle Macklin, I spoke to him face to face yesterday. Maybe I should have asked them handing out flyers. Maybe I missed the comment that that goes to. Um, because I know that, like Chris, that's what he was doing today. They were actually hanging up flyers. They have, um, they have been on searches and they have been hanging up flyers. So um, the mom and the stepdad. So um, in fact, that's, he did that today also. I see you. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, single mom, for being a member for four months. Hi, teenies. I hope that you're good. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, all in tanks. Whistle while you lurk. Come home safe, Sebastian. Thank you so much. I'm going to apply that to the billboard. I really appreciate you so very much. Jay did 17 months. I love you, sis. Thank you so very much. I really appreciate you. Hey, Christy A., thank you for being here. I am really, really happy with the billboards, by the way. Yes. Let, you know what? I do have a picture of those. This is the new billboard that I have up. I had some other ones up previously, and then I revamped these. And these are the two that are currently up and running right now. And so we're going to be able to have those running until Friday um, because right now I have the blip set at like uh, $25 a day and I may have to take it down. Well, I think we're getting about um, so far this past week, we've gotten about 70,000 views, I think, on the one. Um, and I'll show you guys where those are located. See if I've got those over here. The first one is here on I-65. You can see across the way, well, barely, but across the interstate on the left, I-65 traffic headed into Nashville. And I believe that one gets um, 293,000 average daily views on that particular one. That's in southbound traffic on the left-hand side of the road. And then the other one is here, and it's reaching traffic headed to the Rivergate Mall area. Um, and it gets about 40,000 average daily views, and it's in northbound traffic on the right side of the road. And that's more closer to the Hendersonville area. So those are the two we have so far. Um, and if I could put up more, I would. But I did want to share that with you guys. And my husband has also got Sebastian's flyer on his semi. He travels yes. all 50 states and Canada. I agree with that, Karen. I don't, I'm not much on the speculation. I like to stick to the facts and I just want to bring these people home to their family because that's where they deserve to be. Hi, lady. I mean, at the end of the day, none of us are going to put handcuffs on nobody. That's right. So putting his information out there and is about the best that we can do. Amen. And share that flyer out no matter where you are because we don't know where Sebastian is. He could be anywhere in the country by now. That's, That's exactly true. right. Cluminati, God bless you. Thank you so much. I will apply that to the billboard. That means we can have it run until Saturday. Because that's a whole other day on, um, that Sebastian's face will be seen. God bless you and thank you so much, Cluminati. I am 
I am so grateful for that. I will go as soon as we get off this live stream, I will go add all of that over and we will get those extended out. So. Thank you, Allie, for posting that with the phone numbers on it. Kinky Ad says, but y'all have your own thoughts, right? Even though y'all don't publicize them. I'm sure that lots of people have their own opinions about things. There's things that I have a, my own opinion about, but you know, I try to just keep my opinion to myself. I wait for law enforcement, you know. I've got and my that opinions. Part. I've got my opinions and you know, speculations that go around in my mind also. But the way I try. I just got to do what I can live with tomorrow. What I can't live with is accusing people of something that I have no grounds to be accusing them of. I can't live with that tomorrow. It, it's not always just easy to say, forgive me and be forgiven um, because these are people's lives. Uh, do I have, I have opinions that's, you know, sometimes like y'all's, but what good does it do? If I, if I put that out there, that's my opinion. But somebody else that may run with what my opinion is as facts oftentimes leads to false information being put out. And, and that's my opinion. Thank you so <laughs> much, Shane, for donating that $50. We really, really appreciate it, you. Cluminati, thank you. We will make it two days. Absolutely. God bless you. Thank you so much. Whistle while you lurk. Thank you. Thank you so very much. The five cane canes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bless you. I'm, I'm going to have these billboards up for as long as I feel like we need them. Um, that is going to make the family so happy because I'm telling you guys, they want nothing more for, than for Sebastian to come home. And I'm just, I mean, I'll have to put the money up because obviously I won't get this until April, but it's okay because I know my husband's listening to this live stream right now and he'll let me, he'll, he'll front the money for me. It's, it's so appreciated. It's so appreciated. I can't thank you guys enough. It means so much to me that you would do this for this young man to keep his face out there. I want to talk to Chris and ask him if he if there's another place that they would like for me to put another billboard and maybe we can get another billboard up. If there's a place that they think that, you know, that would be more helpful, we can change them up, you know. Um, and the family also needs to contact Lamar Media to see if they'll donate a billboard as well. Yeah, and yes. I did send that. I did send that to Katie to let her know that if she wanted to call, she could ask about that too. And I will. Um, we will. Ask, we will definitely ask him that. Mods, help me remember to ask this question because that is a that's really good. I need to go get grab my notebook. Amy in Boston, thank you so very much. I really appreciate that. I think that'll definitely take us. Um, that'll take us to Monday. That'll take us to the next Monday right there. Um, Cause like I said, it's, it's about 20, it's about $23 a day is what I, is what it's set out right now. Um, and that the more that you spend, the more views that you get. So that's why I've kind of had to keep it at that because I want to be able to keep it up for more days. Um, and I've had lots of people to tell me they've, they've seen it and that, you know, it's, um, it's changing over, you know, it's fast moderation. I think it's like um, an eight second flash um, that it comes up. So if we're getting 60,000 flashes a day, like that's great, you know, between the two billboards. So Travis's West Nashville billboards. Um, yeah, this is more on the, the, the northeast side, I guess where these two are located, like more towards um, the Goodlettsville, Hendersonville area on that side of Nashville. So um, maybe if there's another area that they want to suggest that they would like to have one, you know, I'm more than happy to, um, to do that for them. 
um, whatever will help in finding Sebastian, that's what we that's what we want to do. Cluminati says the dad side of the family has reached out to the governor to ask if he will speak publicly about Sebastian. That's amazing. I think that's wonderful. And I'm just praying for everyone in in the entire family. I can't imagine what they are going through right now. Exactly. Um, I have anxiety just thinking about him being out there and just not having a clue like what actually transpired. I would just be beside of myself. Um, I can just feel my heart racing right now because it, it would make me so upset, you know, if this was my child. So, um, Booberry said, I appreciate the facts and not speculation. Speculation only causes drama and gets the victims lost in the discussions. That's exactly right. And we just want to stay focused on, um, you know, what we're doing. Thank you, Michelle, for screenshotting that because I do want to remember to ask that because I think that's a great question. Yeah, it, that is awesome news. I think that's wonderful. Angela, I, and I've, I see your question. I did see that earlier in the chat. I wasn't ignoring you. Um, and I'll have the mods to screenshot that too. It's probably because he works out of town. You know, for, for you know, more, you know, when he's out of town, I think he works for like, you know, a long period of time. So it may have been a certain period of time that he was out of town, you know, so... You can ask, we can ask if he wants to clarify that. And if he's able to, he will. And, if, you know, if law enforcement's ask him not to give any clarification for whatever reason, then, you know, I just, we just ask that we respect the family, what they're able to discuss with us. But thank you for being here. And I appreciate your question. Single mom says, I think Governor Bill Lee would mention Sebastian Rogers. I can't imagine that he wouldn't. Cluminati says Gallatin is right next to Hendersonville, and a lot of people go through Gallatin to get to Nashville, Hendersonville, et cetera, for work. Good to know. Thank you for letting me know that. Annabella, so good to see you. Um, or Annabelle, I'm sorry. I put an A on the end of it, but it's Annabelle. I don't think the parents are involved. I still think those lights in the backyard may mean something, even though L.E. says they don't. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Hey, Stevie, thank you so much, Stevie. We are definitely going to be able to keep these billboards up. So I'm I'm so thankful. You guys are amazing. You guys are amazing. So I want to talk to you guys about this TBI newsroom update. I want to go over that real quick because I want to get that. Let's talk about what the facts are before we have Chris to come up here because I do want you guys to make sure that if you're new to this case, if you haven't got got up to date on what the most uh, recent uh, update is. Um, this is what it is. And I want to make sure everybody is on the same page when we uh, talk about this. So let me get over here. Let me know when you guys can see that. Just Mary, thank you. I appreciate that so much. We're just here to help. We're not here to weaponize anything or to, you know, to accuse people or, you know, because we, I really don't know. I don't have the facts to be able to say, well, I think this and it, it's definitely this or this definitely happened, you know, because we don't have any definites right now. Okay. Sorry, I was getting a text and I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't missing anything. Okay, so let me take this comment down over here. Okay. All right.
Okay. This is from the tbinewsroom.com, and this was released on March the 15th of 2024. Let me see if I can get this enlarged. I think I can actually make that the full screen. There we go. I think that looks better. Okay. This reads, the Amber Alert status, Sebastian Rogers, on March 15th, 2024. On February 26th of 2024, 15 year old Sebastian Rogers disappeared from his Sumner County home, leading to a large scale ground search that resulted in first responders covering about 2,000 total miles in the effort to find him. And here you have that Amber Alert for him. We continue to work with the Sumner County Sheriff's Office and the FBI to both proactively pursue information that may be relevant to the search for Sebastian and to pursue any tips or pieces of information that may come in. We have not forgotten about Sebastian. Much of the work currently being done to bring Sebastian home may not necessarily be public or visible. But agents, detectives, and intelligence analysts continue to work around the clock to review every bit of information available. Sebastian's family has remained cooperative since the search began and have done whatever law enforcement has asked of them. At this stage in the investigation, there are few clues to indicate what happened to Sebastian or where he may be. There is not proof at this time that there is any criminal element involved in his disappearance. But also, there is not any proof that there is not a criminal element involved. So agents and investigators are reviewing any possibility at all that may indicate where Sebastian is. In order to preserve the integrity of the investigation, we cannot discuss many of the specifics surrounding the case, but we know how many people care about Sebastian and what has been done and is still being done to bring him home. Also, we want to caution the public about putting too much stock into information being presented in various media forms that is inaccurate or incomplete and could be damaging to the investigation. We ask the public to help us by refraining from sharing speculation posted by or discussed by non-official sources and reporting only credible tips or information to 1-800-TBI-FIND. Information that has been released by the TBI and or Sumner County Sheriff's Office throughout the investigation, including a list of frequently asked questions, can be reviewed below. And the first one is what areas have been searched? And the answer says, within the first several days of the search, more than 2,000 miles were searched on foot. Many of these areas were initially searched and searched again. Law enforcement officers have searched the neighborhood, surrounding neighborhoods, schools, and many other areas of the county by foot. Bloodhounds and handlers have searched the same areas. There have been aerial searches with helicopter, drones, and a fixed-wing plane. These aerial searches have been conducted on multiple days and multiple nights using thermal imaging technology. Sebastian's residence, the yard, the house, the vehicles have all been searched multiple times. The neighborhood where Sebastian lives has been canvassed. Neighbors' houses have been searched. Sebastian is autistic, and his family says he is drawn to water. Pools in the neighborhood were searched. Dive teams were brought in, 
and bodies of water around the neighborhood and beyond that area were searched, including caves. Do you guys have anything you want to say? Well, some of the questions has been answered just with this article, like uh, the neighbors' homes have been searched. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Sebastian's residence has been searched multiple times as well. So, exactly, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have another question here. What about the technology aspect? Have you collected security video from area homes and businesses? Have cell phones been checked? And the answer says many neighbors and businesses have provided video from home and business surveillance systems. We are grateful for that cooperation. The video has been collected and from the beginning of the investigation has been analyzed and enhanced where possible by tech experts with the TBI, FBI, and Secret Service. To date, nothing gathered from these video systems has been determined to be significant. We do caution that some surveillance video being shared in the public may have been misinterpreted or misidentified or not shown in its entirety. It has been determined that it does not hold any evidentiary significance to the investigation. Numerous search warrants have been executed. Cell phone data has been analyzed and any other available digital evidence has been collected, searched and documented. Information was collected from Sebastian's gaming system and has been analyzed. With help from the FBI, vehicles that were placed in the area at or around the time of Sebastian's disappearance have been accounted for. These videos and all the electronic evidence that has already been reviewed is often also being reinvestigated. Thoughts on that? Well, it's good that they're doing forensic analysis of the gaming systems and all the electronic devices because with him being a gamer, like I said in the chat earlier, there's a good possibility that that could have some aspect to him being missing. Right. I think one of my questions that I have is if he played games also at his bio dad's home, were those devices also taken and analyzed as well as devices from the stepmom? Because if, if he's a gamer, you would just want to know that if there were any devices at either of the parents' houses, had he made contact with anyone on any of his gaming devices at any location. Yeah. Does yeah, anyone agree or disagree with that? I agree I just, completely. Yeah, 100%. The, the, any devices over at Seth's need to be analyzed as well. Absolutely. I mean, like Me on out the loud. biological dad's interview, he, he talks about um, a game that I'm, I've seen my kids here play. And it almost requires a headset because you're playing with partners to be able to communicate backwards and forwards. So I think it's a real good, uh, good question. Well, Crystal, um, I hate to put you on front street, but I have to ask you a question. Yeah. You, um, you have had an autistic child in your home. Yes. And this highly intelligent autistic child was able to break codes. Well, this highly well, intelligent autistic child actually hacked my bank account with a smart TV. Um, 
And there you I have it. I figured out real quick that I had to have my cameras put on the roof of my house because this child used a flashlight to blind out one of my cameras. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see that part. The, that part where you said the child hacked your bank account from a smart TV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I learned real <laughs> quick what kind of TV to be allowed in the other bedrooms. Yeah. So, um, Sebastian is very intelligent. You just never know. That's why I just want to make sure that everything and has you know been I, when they say all devices, I hope they did take all devices from everywhere. I am just friends to, with a woman that has a autistic kid that is um low functioning. And she told me that her son one morning didn't want to go to school. And she told him, you know, you, you're going to school. You need to go in there and get your clothes on. So he goes back in his bedroom. When it gets time for her to go take him to the bus stop, she goes in there and he's not in there. Her son, who had never left before, went out the window, put the window back down, and went up in the mountain and fell asleep by a tree. Just because he didn't want to go to school that day. So just because something hasn't happened before, it doesn't mean there ain't a first time for everything. Right. Thank you, Linda. Thank you so much. God bless you. I really appreciate that so very much. I will be putting that towards Sebastian's billboard. I really appreciate you. I just happened to see that on my phone and I wanted to come over and say thank you so very much. And while y'all are here, please go crush the like and share this out because we want to bring Sebastian home. And the more that people see his face and hear his name, it's going to get the word out. But thank you for sharing that, Crystal. That's why I wanted, when I saw this, I wanted to ask you because I wanted people to understand, like, you can think there's so many, um, that's why they call it a spectrum. You know, um, every child is going to be different. Um, so I'm just so worried about him. It just, it doesn't, a lot of things just, I can't even make it make sense. So it, the next question says, what's going on now in the investigation and what's next? And the answer from TBI is the search for Sebastian has not stopped. Every day, tips and leads are investigated. People are being interviewed and re-interviewed. Evidence that has been reviewed once already is being gone over again. And we continue to ask residents in the area of the search to keep an eye on your property to see if anything may have been moved or displaced is this a place where a child could have hidden? If you have property that has ledges or holes that a teenager might find interesting and you can't search it yourself, please contact the tip line and we can have someone check it out for you. If you know Sebastian and have information about him, what he likes, how he acts, that you think could be relevant, let us know. We know... How many people are so very invested in getting Sebastian home? We will update this information as there may be any developments. Please use the tip line at 1-800-TBI-FIND to provide any relevant information you may have, or you can send it to tips to TBI at tbi.tn.gov. Please do not send tips to our social media pages. And finally, we are extremely grateful to so many members of the Sumner County community for the time, attention, and prayers being offered to help find Sebastian. The members of multiple law enforcement communities, emergency management personnel, wildlife organizations, 
and so many other groups, along with very generous businesses and individuals who have provided well wishes for Sebastian, along with water, food, other comforts to searchers, all these contributions are so greatly appreciated. Thank you. He has such a sweet face. If you're watching this live stream and you know Sebastian, you have seen this young man, please don't hesitate. If you think you have seen this young man, please call. Please call law enforcement and let them know that you think that you have seen him. Michelle, thank you for sending me those questions. I will save those up for when uh, he joins us on the panel. Hopefully, he'll be here soon. So does anybody have any questions? This is the most recent update from TBI, and maybe that will have answered um, some people's questions that they may have had, because I noticed that some of the questions in the chat, it sounds like the TBI statement may have answered some of those. Um, so I hope that helped. Kim, I think that's very possible that Sebastian could have made a friend that the parents didn't know about. I mean, you wouldn't have wanted to ask my parents who my friends was because they probably wouldn't know it at school. Chris, nobody's blaming the victim. What do you mean by that? <laughs> He's just a kid. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't really know exactly what happened, but nobody's if anybody's blaming anybody, I think social media is really blaming the parents. But we don't have any evidence. Exactly. And the reason why I think the the gaming aspect is also because from all the information I've seen, Sebastian didn't have a lot of friends. And so when you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of friends, what do you do? You try to make friends. And the, one of the easiest things, especially if you're a gamer, to make friends is through the gaming networks. Right. Kinky ads, are you talking about the BioDad doesn't use parental blocker apps? I just wanted to clarify that because I've seen you post that a couple times in chat. So I just wanted to check. Angel says, have they taken a polygraph test? Well, I will let Chris answer that um, when he comes up. And I appreciate all of the donations and I cannot wait to let Chris and Katie and hopefully Seth is listening and he will know that we are going to continue these billboards for Sebastian um, because I'm not just doing this for just the stepdad and the mom. This is for all three of them. This is for Sebastian's family. That's why we're doing this. I don't pick and choose sides. I just am doing this because this child's life matters and we need to bring him home. Where he belongs. Karen, that's true. Kids are extremely tech savvy. My six-year-old niece, I can't believe how well she works a, a phone. It, it's amazing to me. 
it's almost scary. Karen says her seven-year-old is learning to code and circumvents every parental control we set. Wow, Karen. Your seven-year-old sounds like a genius. Thank you, Zena. I'm so glad to see you, honey. I think hope you've been doing well. Victoria says, I also know kids do and have disappeared without a trace. History shows that. Which is what scares me. I agree, Tinis. She says, but realistically, Sebastian would have to come back long before now. Three weeks? I don't care how high-functioning can't survive without means for food, water, shelter. Yeah. And that's, that's what worries me the most, right there. Right. Um, exactly. I mean, this kid's out there, and he's been out there for three weeks. Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> Bush dwellers, please push the button to reflect your satisfaction. <laughs> we would appreciate it. <laughs> that just that, Chris, Chris, that made my said, Chris says my comment was taken out of context. I was replying to something specific that you had said. Oh, and what was that? I'm sorry, Chris. I just I happened to just jump over to the comments, and that was yours was the first one that I saw. Hey, vet girl. Mo it's very rarely that a kid just actually disappears without the help of anybody else. It's it's not something that's very common for sure. And I've co been covering cases for three years. Yeah. And Arctic Fox knows. Arctic Fox covers tons of cases. Do you think kids go missing on their own Arctic? It happens, but it's rare. I mean, you do have the runaway cases, but the problem is, you know, in so many cases, law enforcement tries to stamp any kid over the age of 10 that goes missing as a runaway. That's the problem that we run into way too often with these cases. So yeah, they do have some runaway cases. And in those cases, I definitely think they need to further investigate what's going on at home because kids don't just run away for no reason whatsoever. Absolutely. Terry, I, I agree with you. I'd rather err on the side of innocence rather than attack the parents who are likely going through hell. I just like to just give it time. And sometimes waiting is the hardest part. You know, because I, I can understand how people, you know, would feel impatient. I feel impatient every night when I go to bed, I have to lay down and I have my prayer list and I pray for these missing people and I get really frustrated, you know, because I think about kids like Summer Wells, who's still missing in Tennessee under an Amber Alert. Exactly. They, they don't have anything. This child's and been missing over a thousand days and there's no evidence to what happened. Like, explain that to me. It doesn't make any sense. So, you know. And, and something else I just kind of want to point out is there's no textbook that tells parents how to react when their child goes missing. You've got so much going on. This is the most traumatic thing that you'll ever go through in your life. And you just don't know how you're going to react. I, I mean, back when Adam Walsh went missing in the early 80s, people were blaming his mom for what happened to him because she wasn't speaking out. It was always John Walsh on TV that was doing all the talking. And so people tried to blame Adam's mom, saying she had something to do with his disappearance. Laura, he is coming, but right now he is engaged um, in a, on a phone call. And so when he's done, he'll be here. Thank you for your patience. Yes, there is always an action that brings a reaction. Jaded said, if I could do it again, my children would have had no unsupervised online activity or phones until they were adults. It's absolutely dangerous for children. 
Mary, I don't, I do not know that. I don't know why that would have anything to do with it. I mean, she lives out on the West Coast, so I'm inclined to think that that doesn't have, doesn't apply to this situation, but I'm sure that investigators are covering their bases with that. We can certainly, you know, ask Chris, but I, he may be inclined to not answer that because I don't really feel like involving his, whatever his previous uh, status is with his other, uh, his divorce or whatever he's going through. I don't know that that is, has anything to do with Sebastian actively going missing. And I know he has addressed some of that um, online. I actually have some screenshots of um, Chris trying to answer questions, you know, over on Facebook. Um, Victoria says she ran away at uh, from home at 14 and never went mm -hmm. back. Well. Wow. I've got that um, question. Is it? Um, Angel, I heard it from the parents. Oh, so I don't know where you can find that information. You could always call law enforcement, I guess, if you wanted to ask them. But that's where I heard the information. That's actually a good question that Tinis is asking about how the doors would be locked, if they locked automatically or what type of system was in place. I've got that on my list to ask. I know personally, like for me, I know when you're thinking about a deadbolt in a house, you're thinking about a key, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I have digital locks on my house. I have a digital box on my doors that takes a code. And when I leave my house, there's just one concentric button at the very top and you just press it and it automatically locks. So did anybody ever think that that was a possibility? Because I mean, for me, when I leave my house, it's like, um, it's not even a thought. It's just a habit, you know, to hit that keypad button because it automatically locks the door. Like I don't have to have a key. Because I just have a, a number pad, you know. Um, so sometimes things are just force of habit. You know, when you leave the house, you lock the door. You know, we don't really. So, I mean, that's a good question. That's a good question. I don't really know. It is a keypad. I don't know. I would have to, you know, he would have to answer that specifically, but that I have that on my house. So that was my first thought when they were asking about that. So Justin says that's what he has too. I mean, it's just so much easier. Um, I think. I think it's important for people to know that. Yes, Chewy. Uh, Chris don't know the questions we have to ask either. Um, so yeah, a lot doesn't. of the questions we really can't answer right now because we haven't asked the questions yet. Mm -hmm. That is correct. That is correct. Hang on, I'm getting a text. I mean, I personally can say that I've never talked to Chris. Thought criminal, thank you so much for being here. News media from Iowa to San Antonio, from Oregon to Oklahoma, and more are posting Sebastian's case now. That is wonderful. We encourage you guys to please continue to share out Sebastian's posters everywhere, just in case. Just in case, because you never know where he may be. Thank you for being here, Miss Chewy. I hope you're doing well. It's good to see you. I always, when I catch you live, it's I always have to catch you on the replay. I'm going to have to get better at that. And Kim, you said, could he have made a friend that the parents didn't know about? That's a great question. That's a great question. These are all questions that I can't answer. 
but hopefully he'll be here soon. And I'm sorry to have to delay y'all, but um, whatever he's taking care of, you know, he has, he needs to do what he has to do. So, um, you know, I have to give him grace. He's taken the time to try to join us over here. So if something is taking place where he has to handle that, then, you know, I have to respect it. Um, something else that I thought that was very interesting this past week also um, was I watched the premiere of the behavioral panel. How many people in chat saw that? How many people watched the behavioral panel? Um, take a look at uh, Katie and Chris, the interview they did with the news station. I thought that was... Um, I thought that was a very, a very good. Well, you know, I love it because I love the behavior panel. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. I know you do. I'd be emailing them getting questions. <laughs> you did watch it? Yeah, I watched part of it. I didn't have a chance to watch the whole thing yet, but I did watch the first half. Alicia says she doesn't take them seriously at all. I think I saw somebody uh, in, uh, there was a comment somewhere that said they could do a better job than the behavioral panel. And I said, well, then you should make a, a channel and tell us all about it, about why you know, you feel like you're able to give a better synopsis of what is going on than they, because they have a lot of credentials behind them. I'm inclined to agree. There's, I don't agree with necessarily everything, but I can see where they're coming from on a lot of what they have to say. Um, I thought it was a very good, I thought it was a very good, um, interview walk back up all those things hey dragon classy it's good to see you thank you for being here um you liked pat brown better poke salad who's that may have to go check it out well i mean well i mean there's that they all, they all, well, I still feel like they did say some accurate things about that, like she had guilty knowledge. Guilty knowledge. Yeah. It's very interesting, but, you know, it's not it's not a 100% thing. Emily said, I saw the BP and I agreed with everything they said. I mean, this is the way I look at it with that. Um, I find them very interesting because they are trained in what they do. Vet girl says, Crystal, that little Hello, boy's Drake. case you covered from Kentucky. Awesome. Lots of thoughts on that one. Read about it years ago. Thank you, vet girl. And I mean, he's still missing. So this isn't something that's just started happening. I think we know about it more now because of the internet. But like in Kelly's case, he went missing in 1982. Mm-hmm. Thought Criminal says, I listen to all and make up my own mind. As you should. Yes. As you should. You know, you don't necessarily have to like follow people. You know, you look at all the information that you have and make your own decision about it. Because, you know, that's what you should do is but and make sure that you have all the facts, make sure you have all the correct information, you know, when you're when you're making your mind up, because that's that's very important. Um, and just like TBI just said in their newsroom update, you know, they wanted to make sure that people were very careful about, you know, uh, the information that they were um, you know, reading online and sharing online because there was a lot of misinformation that was going around and things that were not true. And they want people to be aware of that um, because it may be misinterpreted or misidentified. Um, so, 
you know, take that into consideration when you're sharing information. To think they've searched more than 2,000 miles on foot. I mean, drones, a fixed wing plane, helicopters, you got people on foot. I keep thinking to myself, what, what are we missing? What are we missing exactly? Hey, remain calm. Thank you so much for being here. It's good to see you. Hey, SWTC. I'm glad to see you here. Hope you're doing good. I can't answer that, Laura, because I have uh, I have a case that I've covered here locally, Heather Elvis, and they thought that her body was buried in concrete. And a lot of people know those things because they've heard it in other cases. <laughs> So, I mean, and logically speaking, I mean, think about it. I don't know, personally, because I don't even know how to pour concrete, much less to do something like that. I mean, that's just not who I am, obviously. I don't know. Maybe he's just trying to, to be logical about it. I mean, are you saying they have a new thing of concrete at their house? I mean, I don't know. I don't even know where that would have came up that was he asked that I would I mean yikes <laughs> Michelle said Laura it's common knowledge lay down now how much concrete would be needed to cover you completely <laughs> Michelle <laughs> See, that's how I think about things. I mean, I just try to be logical. Yeah, well, foul play may be what we're missing. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, Kim, well, we know about all the false information in that case. I mean, it's it's bizarre. Yeah, to, I know, Vet Girl, and to think about all of this infrared search stuff that they've used, I mean, you would think they would have seen something. And to know that TBI has stated that this video that Nick Barris is sharing, that it doesn't have any evidentiary value to it. Chris well, why, is are here. We not, why are we talking about it? You know, so. Um, Chris is here. Don't you? Hey, Chris, do you have the link to come up? I did send it to you, didn't I? Thank you for being here. I told y'all he would be here. He just had some things he had to take care of. Kim, I don't know where that came from. It must have been in a Facebook group thing that I missed. Let me get that over to you. I think I've got it on here. Okay, I seen it to you. Victoria, you can email her. Yeah, you can email me at Cocase Crystal and I'm Cocase Crystal on Facebook. At Gmail. It's not coming on. Oh, here we go. Y'all give me just a second. Hello. Here we go. Hello. How are you? Oh, uh, well, I'm here. Every day's a struggle, but we make it. I know. Well, I do appreciate you taking the time to join me uh, tonight so that we could um, just talk about your stepson, Sebastian, missing um, and everything that's transpired since our last conversation where you and Katie joined me to talk to me about Sebastian's disappearance. Um, it seems like it's been a rough week. Uh, it's been a rough 21 days and counting. I know it has. And I just appreciate you taking the time to join us 
to maybe answer some questions. And I know there's some things that you wanted to clear the air about. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time to just come over here and do that. You're welcome. Um, just trying to think where I want to start. I know there may be people that are watching or listening to this case. Um, everyone in the chat, if you would please, um, if you do have questions, the, the panel, Crystal, Arctic, and I have um, some questions and things that we are going to, um, we're just going to ask Chris. We've seen um, some people asking questions, some uh, just we want to ask our own questions. We want to just make sure that things that were asked from the very beginning to make sure that we've covered all of those things. Um, and this may be answering the question that you have. And once we have went through some of those questions, we will take some questions from the chat. Um, and I just ask that if your question has already been answered by Chris, in the live stream that we may skip over your question because I don't want to have to make him continue to re-answer the same question, you know, over and over. So um, we're going to start out with some questions from the panel and then we will hop over uh, to the chat and we'll have uh, Chris to see if he'll answer some questions from you guys. So we appreciate everyone um, for your patience and, um, you know, we just ask that you show respect and just, you know, kindness goes a long way. And we appreciate that. Um, let me get over here. I'd made myself a couple of notes. So, um, I hope Sebastian's mom is okay. I know this has been very difficult for her. Well, she's right here beside me, so she can hear every single thing. Hey, Katie, I, I appreciate you being here and listening. Um, you are in our thoughts and prayers, and I know this must be so very difficult for you. Um, and I'm just praying for your strength. Thank and you. that's Sebastian will be found soon. Um, we had lots of people donate tonight. Um, so many wonderful amazing people in this chat. Um, we're going to be able to keep the billboards up um, until um, after next Monday. So, um, so another, we've got a whole nother week that we're going to be able to run the billboards, which is amazing. Well, thank you and, to everybody that has contributed and been a part of this from the, from the start to current. Y'all are very much appreciated in the chat. You have to know that it means so much to them because these billboards and listen, Chris, also, if there is another location that you and Katie would like to have a billboard, um, you can, you know, let me know and I'll be happy to get another billboard going. If there's a location that you are interested in, you can just reach out to me. Um, sometime this week and I can look into it. If you think there's another location, that would be good. And we can get another one going up. Um, just, ma just let me know and we'll make yes, it happen. Okay. So, um, besides gaming, what are th other things that Sebastian likes to do? I love, he likes to fish. He loves to play on playgrounds. Um, we get the little kid crafts from Lowe's and Home Depot, so he likes to build little things with me. That's really cool. And you said that Sebastian didn't really have a lot of friends. He didn't really have any friends. He has a couple of friends at school. Do you think it's possible that, and which you told me before you didn't think so, but do you think there's any way possible that he could have met a friend online, either at school or at his father's or at through at your house. It, do you think that's possible in any way? Uh, we didn't. There's always a possibility that that is, that is a question that I can, I'll, like, 
there's always a possibility that a child can do something. Now, from my best recollection, mom's best recollection, uh, and the father's best recollection, not that we know of. We know of. Um, our okay. house, as we've stated, has been, it is strict. It stays locked down with that kind of situation. Um, we use internet time and gaming as like a positive reinforcement rather than a free access. Okay. Um, TBI is... Uh, well, excuse me, let not just TBI, but all law enforcement agencies involved are actually anything and everything, which way they can, they are doing their best to investigate, look, search, uh, any little thing. And right now we're just, we got no luck. Okay. Um. Katie, can you walk us through um, for it, for anyone that's new to this case that may be just finding out about Sebastian being missing? Can you walk us through uh, what happened on Sunday, like the before Sebastian, you know, went missing? Can you walk everybody through that and what led up to you? finding out that Sebastian was missing. Yeah. Um, Sunday morning, I'll just start at the morning. Sunday morning we got up and I made um, a fun breakfast for us. Uh, spaghetti pancakes. Google it, y'all. Um, we FaceTime family while we were eating so he could brag because that's something he likes to do. And um, we were laughing and joking on FaceTime and having a good time with that. Um, after breakfast, um, we got a call to go pick up um, our niece and um, go um, take her to meet up. So we, we did that. We went and picked her up and we met her mom at... Um, BJ's and uh, we were there with um, family members um, we come home and put our groceries away and then a little bit later we went to the bowling alley a local bowling alley here and we played games and then we and this is just Bubba and I and we went to dinner just the two of us and then come home um he took the trash out because that's his chore. And um, he come in and he was playing in his room until bedtime. And uh, at bedtime, you know, I, I told him, I said, hey, Bubba, it's time to go to bed. And he goes, okay, good night, Mama, I love you. And then he said good night to his puppies. And um, he went to bed. Okay, and walk me through what happened you said that you were on a phone call you were on the couch and then you went to bed at midnight walk me through exactly what transpired during that time before you went to bed at midnight for you so well my husband he works out of town a lot so um it, we normally sit and talk every evening and uh, i normally fall asleep on him <laughs> um and he'll, you know, he'll tell me, wake up, you know, you got to go to bed. And um, so, and that was right around midnight. Um, so I got up and I put the puppies up and I went to bed myself at midnight. And, um, you know, I went, I went to sleep, obviously. And then um, at 6 a.m., I went to wake him up for school. And that's when I couldn't find him. And... Um, Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Take your time. Take your time. Tell me, did Sebastian take any type of medication before he went to bed or that would make him sleepy or did any, if he did take medication, it was just in the morning or did he take medication at night before he went to bed? 
he did take medication nightly okay. and daily. Um, okay. Okay. Just for HIPAA for HIPAA reasons, we are, we will not disclose. I understand. What the is. I was just trying to think, you know, if there was something that might have made him sleepy, like if he would have woken up. You know, I just all these different questions that people so, have asked. Me. So, right. but you don't have to disclose any sp particular. We nobody needs to know that. You know specifically, I just wanted to ask. Um, do you feel any particular way? Do you do you have any thoughts about? about Sebastian's disappearance. Do you feel that he may have walked off? I've seen a lot of people in chat saying that he went out the window versus he went out the door. How did the door get locked? Um, that you found the door locked. Um, um, can you walk me through exactly what that looks like and what you found was the door locked? What do you think may have occurred for him walking off versus well, I tell you this with someone. Okay, we did, we didn't find any signs of the windows, but um, I and without disclosing the details of my door locks, I will say I that Sebastian regularly and consistently went out and locked the door behind himself. Okay, okay. All right, let me get over here because I have some other questions that are coming in. Um, now I, I will say this much, let, let them ask questions. I mean, we're not hiding anything. I've heard so much negativity that I refuse to answer questions. Let them fly. I mean, okay. I'll be, be respectful okay. on my responses. I would hope they would be respectful in their questions, but please let them fly. We're good with it. Okay. Um, I'm just going to, uh, Crystal, Arctic, do you have a question that you want to ask before I take a few questions from the chat? I do. I'm gonna, okay, go ahead. Um, we know that that Sebastian was high functioning, uh, had high functioning autism. Uh, what would you say was strengths and weaknesses that he had? Because no two kids are the same is why I'm asking. <laughs> that is you, you you are nowhere far from the truth on that because that is so correct um sebastian is extremely high functioning he's his weakness he does not have a sense of personal space um they've always been working with him about like a three-foot rule because he likes to be right up in your face hey you know whoa he's he deals with some social and emotional dysregulation issues Mm -hmm. Simply put, he he his emotions or responses don't always appropriately match the situation, um, and and socially he can be somewhat awkward interacting with others because he doesn't always match. Like I don't know how to say it right. Like it, someone will want to talk about one conversation, but if that's not the subject he's fixating on, he will just railroad over that and go right back to what he's thinking. Um, but at the same time, he's also, for the most part, a pretty happy kid and he loves being a helper and he likes, you know, he likes animals and he's really smart. Um, he, he can play in a game of chess and he's beat grown men in chess. He actually likes reading occasionally, but only if it's what he wants to read. <laughs> Um, so like Minecraft books, um, he loves to read those, um, albeit his humor is a little different. He's funny. I, I prefer he's silly more than anything. How is he with strangers? Depends on the day, to be honest with you. He goes either he's never met a stranger all the way to depending on his mood he don't want nothing to do with anybody so it's kind of difficult to answer that question because it varies depending on where he is in the moment 
Okay. Normally, he he's he's. There's times he's not afraid to talk to people. There's times he is afraid to talk to people. Um, adults maybe not so much, but children he he has no problem approaching children and talking. Um, for the most part. For the most part, like I said, it, it it's. It just depends on what mood and what day of the week you catch him. Okay. Artie, do you have a question you'd like to ask? I just wanted to know if maybe thinking back on it, is there anything you can think of that seemed off or out of the ordinary prior to him going missing that during the night before you noticed he was missing? I honestly didn't notice anything that was like, oh my God, that's weird, you know? I mean, we we had a really good day, you know? He wasn't in trouble at all. We went to bed on a good note. And I, I don't know if maybe he just wasn't saying something. But nothing... And I've gone over this so many times, I'm ill, but I didn't see or notice anything that was like red flag, you know? Okay. He didn't have any meltdowns or anything like that, that that seemed off. No, he was actually really well behaved that day. He was even killed for the most part all day. Uh, can I ask the question? Uh, sure. Was, was that... Um unusual for him uh, no. to be well behaved all day not necessarily in sebastian goes through phases he's got streaks where he's great and then it's like he goes through remission yeah like he, he'll screw up and he'll, <laughs> he'll get in trouble and then he'll be good again and he'll screw up i mean he's he's like a typical kid um in a sense but he just has autism and i mean it it's but, hit or miss but like he'll be doing really really great for a few weeks and then all of a sudden it's like he'll slip a flip a switch sorry and you know and then we're you know we're working on you know going to the bathroom and we're working on manners and we're working on attitude and then you know and then we'll go through that phase and then We'll go through, you know, and he'll, he'll flip the switch again. And he's, you know, doing really great. He just goes through. I understand that know, completely, like, trust me. <laughs> progress, backpedal, progress, backpedal, you know. But it... Now, when I saw on social media, um, mm -hmm. some people were talking about um, Seth had spoken on, um, I guess it was, um, maybe it was the Pascal show that he recently spoke on and he was talking about how um, at the end of the school year, Sebastian was supposed to come and live with him. Um, and can you tell us anything about that? Was, is there anything specific to know about that? I think a lot of people have been, you know, have been saying some very interesting things um, according to, some posts that I saw, um, apparently it's because Chris, you are, um, that he's scared of you, <laughs> that he's scared of you and he's, and that you're bullying him at home. And I just, I, I hate, I don't, I don't like to ask these questions, but I feel like I just want you to, um, Talk to us about why people are saying this and why people are also putting online that you have domestic violence charges. And I just wanted you to talk to us about that. If you, whatever you feel like you can tell us um, so we can try to um, reel that in. <laughs> no, no, it's, I'm okay to address every bit of this. Okay. So you mentioned Sebastian's afraid of me. Well, that is a loaded question because somebody who has released some information out there from another show who um, I won't put his name out there uh, allowed somebody to say something. Now, mind you, you and you have a teenage child or teenage children, all parents know this. Your children are not going to like you because 
you're not there to be their best friend. You're there to be a parent. And as parents, you have rules they have to follow. If they don't, there's consequences. Um, Sebastian will say one day he's upset and mad at me for something and 20 minutes later will run up to me, throw his arms around me, cry and say, I'm sorry and I love you. So, you know, when, when you get in trouble, of course you don't like your parents. You know, he said the exact same things about his father, but that's when you set him down and say, look, bud, Parents are parents, and we're going to have to do what we have to do. And unfortunately, you're not going to like it, but down the road, when you get older and if you decide to have children, someday you're going to look back and say, man, they were right. So, I mean, people have their opinions. They have their thoughts and their assumptions, and that's fine. I have never once stopped a person from having them. That's why we are people. That's how we are but knowing the facts are one thing and then assumptions behind what you want to put out there is something totally different right you know you addressed domestic violence okay there are some folks out there who have decided to go online and go pull some public records which perfectly okay with domestic violence if I had domestic violence in my background, I wouldn't have certain credentials that I have because you're not legally allowed to. Um, domestic violence, no. I've had a temporary protective order and I had a no contact order placed against me in New Mexico with my ex-wife. Now, mind you, let me back up and I'll play the whole story for you. Me and my ex-wife, we actually lived here in Tennessee for a little bit. We had a daughter. And at the time, my daughter was only maybe six weeks old. An event took place while I was holding my daughter. And when that took place, I filed for an immediate protection order against her. We went to court. The court made their decisions. I gave my daughter back to her mother, and when she received her, she jumped in a truck and flew right back to New Mexico, got to New Mexico within two days of being there. She turned around and filed the exact same thing against me in New Mexico. Mm. So everything that people are reading, it's on a court document. But what you don't read is the... um all the things that are happening in the court. You're not reading the transcript. So unfortunately you don't know the full story, but right. if people want to ask, I'm okay to tell you, you know, um, yes, I still have a current custody case going on in New Mexico that actually has absolutely zero bearing on this case with Sebastian. Um, I do ask people to, Refrain from bringing that up because it has no bearing. And all you're going to do is put assumptions and you're going to allow people to have uh, their speculations and, and bring out more false information. And it, what people don't understand is every time somebody puts something out there or they call into the law enforcement agency and says, the stepfather did it, you need to check the stepfather. Well, now you just pulled a body away from the investigation because they are mandated to deal with that. Right. And I have told everybody from the very beginning, the TBI put a news link out and in there it does state that all three parents have extremely been cooperative and constantly or continuously working with law enforcement. And they have, there's absolutely nothing to show that we are responsible, foul play, any of that nature. People have asked about interrogations and polygraphs. All this stuff has been done. All of it has yeah, been I think done. That was one of the questions that I had up next was, have you both taken a polygraph test? 
The results are passed. Chris, can I ask something? Because I know that yes, people was going to ask it afterwards. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the event that happened, was that toward you or by you? It was toward me. Okay. So, so to give you, a, I'll go ahead and paint that story very crystal clear. Um, I was holding my daughter in my left arm. Okay. Mind you, she was a little baby. She was up against my chest, cuddled up next to my cheek and my shoulder. Um, my ex-wife accused me of having an affair with a coworker, um, who was not much into men. I'll let you go that direction, wherever you want to go. Just wasn't into men. Um, and that coworker was my boss at the time. And she didn't like, and I was like, you're kidding me, right? And I showed it to her. She And she's she's very hot-headed. She didn't like the answer. Swore up and down I was. And she connected and slapped me across the left-hand side of my face where I was holding my daughter. If you can do that while a man is holding a child, or a woman is holding a child for that matter, if you can slap that person while they're holding that child, that says something about you. Yeah. yeah and is. I don't have I'm not going to be in that situation. I wouldn't expect any person to be in a situation of that. So I had to do what I had to do based on being a parent which was best for my child. Right. I just knew that in the future that people would be online saying there was an incident and nobody asked what the incident was. Um you and said I'm sure, the results. I'm sure, I'm sure they're the going to results spin are, it. Yeah. The results of the polygraph was that you passed. Is that both of you passed or can you say? Uh, yes. Okay. I think that was the, my, that was my question that was up next was, um, so you've both taken a polygraph test. That was um, some of the questions I see a couple people asking that specifically, did you take a polygraph test specifically? Chloe um, and Mo wanted to know specifically, could you elaborate? Did you take one and also pass? I've got a question and a lot of people have been asking Chris, is there any reason why you don't want Sebastian around your daughter? So uh, I'm going to make this real cr crystal clear for everybody. There's some things that can be uh, can be spoke of, and there's some things that will not be spoke of. And personal issues inside my family are strictly that. They have nothing, no bearing on this investigation. Um, the cops are well aware of everything mm -hmm. involving specifics. And that's quite honestly, I know this is going to sound snarky and rude, but it's really nobody's business as to that because it has no bearing on this case. Understood. Okay. Um... And for the record, I will say this, all three parents have an agreement and we all understand this that can be got said it. got it okay and someone wanted to ask angela said i would like for chris to clarify what he meant when he said he hasn't seen sebastian since early february are you able to clarify and if you're not just state that so i cannot give certain details with this investigation and that's kind of one of those things Okay. Um, I wished I could eventually down the road. I'm sure that that will allow to come out. Okay. But as it stands right now, the answer that I've given is early February was the last time that I saw Sebastian. Um, and no, I was not home. When all of this took place, I actually got back to Nashville. I believe it was it was later in the afternoon. But uh, I was on the phone with the police for the majority of that day until I physically got here. And um, a question that I've 
seed ask. Uh, so I figured I wrote it down to ask you, uh, why was the sheriff's office called and not 911? So I don't, li our house is not designated for city limits, which jurisdictions for police are inside city limits. The sheriff's department is what governs our area because we're outside of that. So if you call 911 and you're outside of those areas, it goes to a central point, but then they will turn around and ask your location and then they redirect you to another dispatcher. If you know who the dispatcher, or who your law enforcement agency is that governs your area, I just call them straight. There's no point in wasting time going from one to another to get to what I need when I know exactly who to call. And you guys were on a three-way call because you yes. were not, you were, you were coming from out of town. Is that correct? Uh, this, we were on a three-way call. Um, yeah, that law enforcement was called on a three-way call. Is yes. that correct? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I just wanted to clarify that. Um, Carrie Dean wants to ask you if Sebastian could have been sneaking out prior without y'all knowing. I'd like to think no. I, I'm going to, I would like to say no. Okay. Um, and the reason why I say that that is not Sebastian. He, he's, he's not a child that just goes outside any, at any point in time without telling somebody something. If somehow that um, Zero knowledge. Yeah, if it had happened, we don't know about it. Um, but our neighborhood is a very small subdivision. It's not It's not huge. Uh, and everybody here looks out for everybody. We all watch to make sure everything's kosher in the neighborhood. And nobody has reported anything uh, of that nature. Okay. Uh, Crazy Linda asked, um, were there any weapons in either homes? And if so, were they all accounted for by law enforcement? Yes. yes. Okay. And um, do you all have camera footage in your home? I've heard people saying that too. Uh, that is that is some information that we cannot divulge at this time due to the on, ongoing investigation. Okay, thank you. I uh, wish we could, but unfortunately, we can't. <laughs> did Sebastian ha have a key to the house? And if he did, did he take that key with him? That is another part of an investigation that's ongoing that we cannot answer. Okay. Um. Uh, can I ask the question I've seen? Whose ideal was it? for Sebastian to move in with his bio dad after school was out? All three parents. And another thing that I've seen, and I mean, I understand if y'all can't answer, but was there also a restraining order on the biological dad? That was posted in a Facebook group. Yes. Um, that someone sent to me, I think. No, that was something else. Let me find it. Someone said it was, that it was actually underneath uh, JLR's video. It wasn't in the Facebook group. Okay, so here's here's what I will openly say about that. Oh, there um, it is. That's what somebody posted in the comments. So what I will say on that is this. People go through divorces and is is it is not the best of times. So I was not pervy to that kind of information prior to my relationship with my wife. That was that if anything happened that happened prior to my knowledge. So I cannot and give you an answer of that. But what I can say is if it is out there, it could be a public knowledge. It could be a public record, but I don't have any knowledge of it. Okay, that's what I needed to ask on that one. Okay, going back over here to my questions. Guys, please, oh, I appreciate your patience, and they are sending me the questions, so um, 
I see that you guys are still posting more questions and I'm getting to them as fast as I can. Um, so thank you guys for being patient. Um, I do have four or five more um, messages that just popped up that said um, they want to know that you definitely took a polygraph and passed because it got cut off by a different question and you they feel like you did not answer that. So I'm just asking one more time. This is the last time, guys, I'm going to revisit this question. Okay. For the record. Mo, he said he passed it, according to Amy. Well, hold on. Somebody asked the question, was a polygraph taken and has it been passed? Yes. I didn't specify who or when. But what I can tell you, everything has been vetted completely. Polygraphs have come back as passed. So I'm confused as in why they're all wondering if myself, my wife, and the biological father took one. When law enforcement agency has come out and told everybody, even in the TBI news link, if you guys hadn't read that, please go out and read that. That's got a lot of great information in it, especially it's probably the most up-to-date information. But they will even tell you. At this point in time, there is no, they have no reason to speculate foul play, anything on the parents. Everybody's been extremely cooperative of anything and everything they've asked us. Okay. And Bobby, why did that happen? Because it's public, it's a public post. And these are questions that people are asking. And that is why it's up there. So um, before we go any further, we'll go back. And this is um, this is another, I have had many questions about this, about supposedly Sebastian's grandmother spoke out last night and um, he said, uh, Trev apparently quoted her um, uh, from some comments on a YouTube chat. Um, is there anything that that you want to say about this particular comment, because I have been messaged multiple times about this. Um, if you want to address it, you don't, and if you don't want to, you don't have to. I just I, wanted I, to ask I, you. I, I'm, I will address it. I have, like I said, I, if somebody's refusing to address something that shows suspicion, I have no problems to address this. The grandmother, which is Seth at that Robin is the name. She is Seth, biological father's mom. She made her statement on whatever YouTube channel. That's fine. Um, Thank you, Trev. What I can say on that is real simple. Like I said earlier in, the, in this podcast, kids are going to say things. They're going to get upset because you're a parent and they don't like your answers. Um. Sebastian has said, like I said before, the same thing about his biological father. But when you sit your kids down and you explain to them that being a parent, you have to do things that they don't like. You know, unfortunately, it is what it is. We're not as parents. Everybody knows we're not to be our child's best friends. We're there to be parents. As a parent, your job in life is to make sure your offspring grow up to be better than we ever have been or get things better than we ever could get. And that's your legacy. That's our job. And kids don't like it. They're not going to understand because they're still young. Their minds are being molded. But eventually they're going to grow up. And when they have their own kids, they're going to look back and go, man, our parents were right. Because everybody that's an adult that has kids right now, not one person can say, no, he's wrong. Because you know, you've all done it. We still do it. And that's just part of it. Right. And thank you, Trev, for being here. I thought this was a very important, you know, when I saw this, it's, you know, it, it really kind of shocked me. And I felt like, you know, while you're willing, you know, to answer questions, um, I thought it was an important question to ask. Um, Trev said, she said Chris verbally abused her, and that's very different than parenting. Um, I, I just wanted to ask because people have a lot of questions. And so that was um, 
I just wanted to ask you, and it was, you know, no shade to Trev time. He just was posting that that's what happened in the chat, and he did verify that it was her. So, um, you know, I just wanted to to bring it well, straight to you. The best way well, to clarify to clear, is to ask. To clear up her statement about me being verbally abusive to her. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, she's not going to tell you the full story. But there's always, remember, three sides to the truth. Hers, mine, and the truth in itself. So you can put figure it out. Me and the grandmother had a conversation. And this all goes, stems back to um, an incident that a family member did that as the parents, we had consulted with law enforcement about something. They recommended not doing it. Lo and behold, something happened and something was done against what we decided. Uh, I reached out to the mom and asked for her help. During that conversation, some accusations got flung uh, in my direction and toward my wife, which the mother or the grandmother actually doesn't have the whole story. She has never once sat down with me, my wife, her son, and gotten the full truth on everything. She's only heard one side of the story. And I can promise you, I've got text messages I got, and I'm not afraid to show them. I'm not afraid to screenshot them and let the public see it. Now, I will say, unfortunately, none of this has to do with the investigation of our son. But, yes, we had a heated discussion. Yes, I sent her an apology for the heated discussion. And I've never received anything back from the grandmother, which I have always left that door open. In fact, the day when they got into town, I invited them to my house and welcomed them in. They stayed for a couple hours, then they left. I helped them guide them to the direction where they were putting their RV and have always made it abundantly clear that regardless, people are going to have their disputes. Doors always open. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Cluminati has asked this several times in chat, so I want to go ahead and address that. Where can locals be looking for Sebastian? Um, Cluminati is local to your area, and um, she would like to know where you would like for people to be looking for Sebastian so they can be looking there. Is there any areas that you and Katie want to have people that are out there searching uh, where you want them to be hanging flyers? What can you tell us about that? Everywhere. I mean, everywhere. I mean, I... For me to give you a designated area would suspect that we think he's in, the, in an area. Well, we don't know. So anywhere and everywhere, people be very vigilant. Please be vigilant. You'd be surprised at how complacent we as society get when we're not focused on things. We're so driven on our day-to-day -day functions that we forget about things that are going on around us. We're right. all guilty, myself included. You know, anywhere and everywhere you can look. If there's if there's not a flyer and you can print one off and post it up where you don't see a flyer, please do. We, I'm speaking for all three parents and the, all the families. We would greatly appreciate that. We send prayers, our thoughts, and our love out to everyone. I promise you. If there was a way we could make it felt and we could show it, we would. We appreciate that, and we're happy. We're happy to help in any way that we can to find Sebastian. Ginger Snaps has a question. Can any of Sebastian's school friends drive? Um. So his, okay, so <laughs> I think there's a misconception about what he calls friends. He's in, he's not in normal classes. He's in, uh, like, what they call it, why we try a program. So any kids with IEPs and et cetera, things of that nature are put into this class where they have three or four teachers or assistants in the room with a teacher at one given time. And while that goes on, there's not many kids in the class. So if Sebastian says they're a friend and they talk to him, he considers them a friend. Okay. But he doesn't, 
he doesn't have friends like most kids that would go and, hey, I'm going over to Johnny and Susie's house to hang out because of his so his social awkwardness. It's very difficult for him to make friends. And he's actually asked for Christmas. You know, we ask, what do you want for, for Christmas? And he's, I just want friends. Right. That's, I mean, we're at that level, but no, unfortunately, he does not associate with kids that can drive. Um, okay. So I wish, <laughs> I wish he had a lot of friends, but I think after this and when he comes home, this boy's going to have more friends than he knows what to do. <laughs> okay. And Doodlebug Fart says, I wonder if Sebastian knows how to connect his switch to Wi-Fi. Like, had he ever done that before? No, ma'am. He does not have the ability. We One, we have the Wi-Fi locked down, so you have to request to join it. And then that request has to be approved by us. Uh, but his switch actually has parental controls on it set forth by his mom. Okay. And uh, Vet Girl RWB. That is Sorry. No, go ahead. Uh, does he have the same rules at his dad's house? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't believe so. Um, we we respect like what he does at his dad's house is under his dad's roof. Um we do stay in communications as far as like his behavior. Hey, this is what's going on. This is the punishment he's received. Uh, it's up to you if you want to continue with that at your house, vice versa. It, it's like I said, there's three of us and we are extremely respectful toward one another when it comes to Sebastian. It, you'd be surprised. It's not like it's a, a tug of war game. It's very, very cooperative among all three parents. Okay. Um, Did Vic Sebastian girl, want to live with his dad? Say again, ma'am. I'm sorry. And did was Sebastian excited about living with his biological dad? <laughs> well, that depends on what day you ask him. To be honest with you, there's days he was and days he wasn't. Um, I mean, like I said, when a kid gets in trouble, I don't want you know, I don't like you. Well, I'm sorry. You know, and then an hour later, he like nothing happened. So it, like I said, it, it it's up or down. Okay, and I'm seeing this in chat, so I'm just going to go ahead and ask: Is there a particular reason that you laugh before you answer a question? I've got my thoughts on it, but I think it uh, would be better if you just took. Um, it. that's fine. There are some questions that when people ask, I have heard these questions so many times. Um, as much as people are, are on social media and they read the responses, I still get the same questions. So it, it's tiresome, but you know what? I told everybody I would answer the questions. So yeah, in a way it's kind of funny that I keep getting the same questions over and over and over. But like I've told everybody, I respect them. I will answer them. Okay. But trust me by any means. Is this fun? No. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy at all. Artie, do you have a question before I read Vet Girl's next question? I think he's muted. <laughs> okay. Um Go Bulldogs. Katie is a, is there with Chris, but if she wants to speak, she will speak. But yeah, she you. is. Um, Vet I girl, do RWB, a about oh, the shoes. I think we have a delay, Crystal. Sorry. Because <laughs> it's okay. I think we okay. do. Let um, me ask this question real how quick. How many shoes did Sebastian have? Say it one more time. How many pairs of shoes did Sebastian have? Uh, well, I'm not going to do how many shoes he has, but I will say that all of the shoes he has are accounted for. Did y'all did y'all catch mom? Um, I didn't it quite up hear a little bit for me. Did you hear? Okay, she said that she would not divulge how many pairs of shoes he has, but 
law enforcement and has accounted for every pair of shoes. I have accounted for all of his oh. shoes. Okay. Um, can Vet Girl says, can you ask what Sebastian's normal school night routine is? Like some kids like to have their shower or a favorite blanket, their favorite pajamas, please and thanks. Sure. Sebastian comes home, gets off the school bus, comes in the house, um, does his chores, completes his homework, um, eats dinner. Uh, that time kind of varies. I don't have any set time on that. Bedtime, we normally have it right around 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Sebastian gets a shower most of the time before he goes to bed, um, around 7 o'clock-ish. Mm -hmm. um, but then, like I said, he's he's in the bed by 9 o'clock. And Sebastian didn't have anyone that lived in the area that he hung out with at all that lives near you? No, ma'am. Okay. No, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Alicia P., for that question. And then Alan Tank says, um, what's Sebastian like with people outside the family that he doesn't know? Is he shy with strangers? Is he outgoing? So uh, that, that question you asked earlier in the podcast, it depends. It each day it kind of varies. Um, he can be shy. He can be talkative uh, with most kids. He don't hold back when it comes to kids. He is like, you know, he's but he's got a up close and in your face kind of thing that he's got to work on. So it kind of makes it difficult uh, with adults. It depends. Uh, there are some days he doesn't even want to talk to family members and some days he may. Um, it just kind of depends. Okay. And hang on one second. I'm just getting to the next one. Arctic, did you or Crystal have a question that you wanted to ask? No, I just, I, I really want to make sure that the audience has a chance to get all their questions in. Yeah, I'm going through each one of them right now. Um, some of them have already been asked, so I'm not asking those. Um, let's see. Uh, Alan Tank says, does Katie look in on him if she gets up to use the bathroom or anything in the night usually? Not normally. I've never really had a whole reason to. I mean, now that he's older, at least. Um, he gets up in the middle of the night and he comes in and gets snacks and, you know, and uh, the dogs don't even bark at him because he shushes them and they know him. But, um, no, I've never, since he's gotten older, I don't really have a reason to, like, peek in on him and wake him up. And does he get up and down normally throughout the night on a regular basis? True Crime Cafe with Dago ask. Um, it honestly, yeah. he gets up and down at different times, different nights. I mean, not always. Um, I mean, he goes in the kitchen and he'll sneak snacks and sweets and things he knows he's not supposed to be having, like typically kids do. Um, but for the most part, I mean, that may be about it. And then he goes right back to his bedroom. Okay. Uh, Bobby James asks, can Chris comment on why you are threatening lawyers about the bio dad's GoFundMe? So the conversation of that is not threatening the bio father with attorneys. That conversation that flew out between me, the father was in the house, his sister was on the phone. We asked them to take that down. That goes back to one of the questions as far as one of the things we all agreed not to do mm -hmm. because even with law enforcement, it says it could portray a bad look. So we all agreed not to do it. She did it anyways. And then we asked her politely to take it down first time. She got nasty with us on the phone. And then I retaliated and I told her, I said, if this causes harm to our son, you can bet I will call an attorney. Okay. Thank you for clarifying uh, that. 
let's see. Um, was Sebastian playing with one of his devices online um, or on his switch before he went to bed? Annabelle Roma asked. None of his devices are connected to online. Okay. All right. And Kiko asked, was he having trouble at school with anyone or was he being bullied that you're aware of? Not that we know of. The administrators okay. that work with him are honestly pretty great and they try to pay attention and be aware not only for Sebastian, but all of those kids. So they do their best to, to make sure that everyone's treating them respectfully and vice versa. Not to say that, you know, Kids are kids, but for the most part, they feel pretty confident that they, they do a pretty good job at taking care of the kids. Okay. And Ginger Snaps wants to know, how long did it take him to take out the trash? Could he have met someone when he was taking out the trash? Only a couple minutes. Our driveway is not very long. I think our driveway might be 50 feet, maybe 75 feet long, and that's from front to back. Okay, and guys, we're we're approaching midnight, so I'm not going to be able to take very many more questions because I still have a few that I need to get to get to. Um, so I may not be able to get to all of your questions, but the ones that I've already been submitted from this point on, I'm going to try to to get to. I see um, there's a, a lot of questions that we've already answered. So, um, this has joined the this, uh, device has been took. Say again, ma'am. I'm so sorry. Uh, the devices in the home, have they all been uh, looked at by law enforcement? Yes, ma'am, they have. Uh, and I believe um, if they go and look in that TBI news link uh, that I was talking about, uh, it may be listed as uh, Amber, Amber Alert Updates or something of that nature. There's a section in that news article that does talk about technology, and that should be able to answer those questions. But to answer yours, yes, everything has been thoroughly looked at in our house as well as the father's house excuse me okay and where's summer 1-800 tbi find ask did sebastian have bad meltdowns with any anger um with the meltdowns that they've had that he had had recently being this age now um, I mean, I don't know what you call a bad meltdown. I mean, what is it? Was he a violent kid? No. Um, did he cry? Did he have a tensor tantrum? Yes. Okay. And he did take his eyeglasses with him. They were not found. Correct. 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 Okay. And True Crime Cafe with Dago said, with all due respect, was he anxious one way or the other to be moving in with his bio dad? Like I said before, yes. I mean, there's he was ups and downs about it. There was days he was happy, days he's not. Um, one of the things I can, I'll, I'll tell you right now that he doesn't like, his dad's a smoker. You know, he doesn't like that his dad smokes. So, I mean, that's, he's like, no, I don't want to go because my dad smokes. But after you talk with him, you know, that's not a valid reason not to be moving in with his father. Uh, someone asked Happy Hemp Creations, how do you redirect any meltdowns that he has? Depends on who he's with. Um, every parent handles him very much differently. Um Sometimes you can just give him a, a pressure hug with light squeezing and talk to him calmly and calm him down. Mm -hmm. And other times you can send him, tell him to go to his room because that's his space and tell him to take five. I mean, there's times where me and him go outside and we'll have a discussion. Like, tell me what's on your mind, dude. I give you free reign. Talk to me. Let it out. I don't care what it is. Just say it. If that's what helps you, 
say it. Because he doesn't want to say a curse in front of mama. Yeah, he, he <laughs> that's <laughs> one thing he's been good about. He's like, look, don't ever do it in front of your mama. It's all I'm asking. But if you and I go out somewhere and you want to do it, I'll give you the, give him no, no consequences. I'll give you some time to do your thing. And he does it. He'll cry. He'll get all of his, his, his thoughts and his feelings out. And he'll cry. And then he'll give me a big old hug and say, I'm sorry. And I love you. We hug it out. I'm like, it's all right, buddy. Trust me. Everybody's got to have an outlet. But we tell him, like, if you need to yell and scream or be angry, just say, I need a minute to do that. And then, you know, whatever you say during that time frame, you don't get in trouble for it. And if you got a curse, you got a curse. But only when you're doing the free time. That way it sets a limitation so that he's not just, you know, free balling all the time with curse words. When uh, when he's with his father that I know of that we've all discussed, um, they'll go fishing. They like to do a lot of fishing. And uh, that's where he has his moments with his dad and they have their discussions. So, I mean, it, like I said, it, it varies with each parent. Okay. Um, David Bryant sent a super chat and he has a question and I'm not sure why this even applies, but I'm going to ask it. Um, David Bryant says, CP said, let questions fly. So, Katie, did you have an active dating profile at the time Sebastian went missing? Any sort of dating profile? I don't I'm not sure. Have, I don't actually have a problem answering that. I've never had a dating profile. I hope that helps, David Bryant. Um. And then True Crime Cafe with Dago says, how often does your daughter get to visit Chris respectfully? I've seen um, a lot of comments in this chat tonight um, saying that you did not want your daughter and Sebastian to be around each other. And I'm just not sure where that uh, where that's coming from. Can you talk to me about that? Sure. I got no okay. problem. So okay. I have a parenting plan with my ex-wife. Um I get her every other year on spring breaks. I get her in the summers. Um, and I get her, like, we split the Christmas time frame. Okay. The, our parent, my parenting plan um, is very much like the mom's with her ex-husband's. The only difference between the two is he lives here. So, and we have a great relationship with each other. So, it's easy to be like... You know, hey, can I have you this weekend, this weekend? Sure, man, whatever. You know, it, it's not like it's turmoil between everybody. Okay, because I was noticing that there were comments saying that the reason Sebastian was going to live with Seth is because your daughter is coming to move in with you and that you don't want your daughter around Sebastian. And I just wanted to get clarification on that. Uh, whoever feels or believes if you've got proof of that please show it to me i'll be i'll be happy to address it but i'll tell you right now i don't have custody of my daughter like that i wished i did um <coughs> sebastian going to his father's has nothing to do with my daughter at all okay thank you for clarifying that you're welcome um I will say, like, everybody out there, thank you for the questions. Uh, I'm glad that we can help clear some of this out. Um, I've told everybody on online, like, look, I'm I'm respectful, I'm direct, and I'm brash. But ask a question, I'll get to them, and I'll answer them the best of, I, best of my ability. Um, there are thousands and millions of people, but there's only three of us, and we are doing our best to be able to address people as we can. Okay. And the reason I was asking, because Alicia P. had made the comment, you know, the problem is you're seeking custody of your daughter. And if you don't want Sebastian around your daughter, just how was that going to work, Chris? Because now Sebastian is missing. That's why people want to know. So hey, that, that was why I asked. No, I understand. And I, I can see where people's correlations are trying to put one and two together. Unfortunately, right. it's two different puzzles. Um, okay. <laughs> My case with my ex-wife, 
that is a whole totally different situation. Um, at some point, eventually, I can let that out. Right now, that's still in an ongoing court battle. Um, and to be honest with y'all, because of all of this with Sebastian, it has actually caused some issues in that court case, which, unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, and hopefully, I'll have some good news, and I'll let you guys know. Hopefully, something here soon. Okay. Chris, can it be verified that you were in Memphis? Yes, very much. Very much. Um, what is law enforcement allowing you all to do to look for Sebastian? Anything we can, as long as it does not hinder the investigation. So if people want more specifics, we've got flyers that are going out anywhere and everywhere we can put them out. We actually were able to get some like um, yard signs, kind of like like the signs that go in the yard for kind of like a uh, um, real estate agents. We got some yeah. of those missing. Uh, we got those. We got those put out, spread through all out the state. Some in different states itself: Alabama, Mississippi, a few in Kentucky, all the way up to Louisville. Uh, I believe we even got some down in Georgia. Um, flyers that we put out. Flyers, we yeah, we got flyers that travel throughout various states, uh, billboards throughout the entire state of Tennessee. I I can, can tell you that I've seen seven from Nashville to Memphis that I could confirm. But we're also out and about. Trying. But we do have, yeah, we are like feet on the ground looking. We're constantly trying to think of different ways. We're reaching out in various positions and people might be able to bring something to the table that we don't know about. Um, you know, there are some companies and out there that are amazing. And foundations that work with missing children. We've been reaching out to them as well. Yeah. I know that you've been working with the aware foundation. I do a lot of work with them. So. Well, them and EquiSearch, the National Center, the Class Foundation, just to name a couple. Yeah, the, the Class Foundation is a great foundation. I did want to let you know that if you reach out to Lamar Media, they're a billboard company, and sometimes they will provide free billboards for children that are missing, too, if you reach out to them. Thank you. That's Thank you. We'll definitely get that looked into. And I did I send you that link, Katie, but I will send it again to you after the live stream to make sure that you have it. Um, Individually, when, uh, what do you all think should happen is to the person if somebody abducted Sebastian? That is not for us to determine. That is, if somebody has Sebastian, all I'm going to say is that that is that is nothing that we want to be a part of until... That is legal. That is law enforcement agency. That has nothing to do with us. We just. They go to jail. So I don't. Mom's just saying they, she better hope they go to jail. <laughs> well, I, I will say what I think should happen. I think that their ass needs to be passed around the jail like a goddamn honey bun. Well, I, I mean, I trust me. I, I have my own personal opinions, but. All I have to say is they better pray they go to jail before I get my hands on them. If I find out someone's hurt my baby. All I'm going to say is we have a we have a legal system and let them go through that aspect of it. And in the end, karma has a name. It will come around and show its face. And eventually they will have to answer for what they've done. True Come Cafe with Dago said, are there any abandoned or empty homes in your area close to you? There's a construction, uh, another subdivision that's building right next door to our subdivision. Um, all of those houses and everything over there have been thoroughly searched. Um, I couldn't tell you how many times over our entire subdivision has been scoured. Um, our neighbors, everybody around us has opened their homes willingly um, and worked with law enforcement. So, I mean, barns, everything got checked. I... I I, I did have one. I, I did have one question. Um, I saw where a dog had tracked Sebastian sent to a construction site. 
have they dug that side up to see if there was any sign of Sebastian there? Um, the law enforcement and every search agency and everybody that's been involved has scoured that place up and down, in and out. Um, there was a pond that was mentioned, a retention pond. Uh, it was only knee deep. They did drain it and they have found nothing. Uh, that reminds me of another question. Um, <laughs> sorry. No, you're fine. No, I know you've already answered that they took your devices. Um, the computer and stuff that Sebastian used at his biological dad's, did they take that as well? Yes, ma'am. Everything has been completely between both households. Everything has been extremely thoroughly scanned, reviewed, everything. Okay, well, that's good to know. They took the devices from his bio dad's house too. And if they um, if they want if they want to come back and get more devices, we like I said, we've opened this house up to everything. If they want it, they come and get it. There is no hesitations, and they off they go. Okay, and um, you and Katie have out been out to do some searches yourself and hang up flyers. Is that? Is that true? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, we have. We've gone out uh, numerous places and hung up flyers. We've gotten with uh, motorcycle uh, chapters and groups and gotten them on board to help us. We've gone from various cities to cities. Um, I personally have gone from Nashville to Memphis and into Mississippi and back. And did they also take the devices from the school as well that Sebastian may have used when they, you said they took all the devices from your house and from the bio dads? Did they also take the school devices as well to look at? Sebastian didn't have devices um, that he was, that he had at school. Mm -hmm. um, but anything and everything, if he had something, has already been scanned and thoroughly searched. Um, and like I said, if you refer back to that TBI news link and the technology proportion, I believe all of that will answer all those questions. Okay. All right. And, um, Karen S said your dogs barked during your first TV interview. Wouldn't they have barked when Sebastian walked out the door? No, because they know Sebastian. When they barked in the first interview, because a stranger was in the a house. stranger was in the house. They've been sitting right here the entire time. Yeah. Okay, and um, you said there was. Um, they had asked you if there was any flashlights that were missing, and that prompted you to go look. Tell me about that. There was so, some questions about the flashlight, so I just wanted you guys to reiterate that. Right. So Sebastian had a little, it's about a little three inch. If you think about the little keychain flashlights the that you used to find at vendor tables they give out for free cheapies. Uh, it was something that he picked up at one of the local festivals. And to so right now, we still this day cannot find it. So we are assuming that he took it with him because it cannot be found. Okay. And how often does law enforcement update you guys? Very regularly. Okay. Um, and uh, Chris Black says, what about the initial press release where it was said that Sebastian liked to stay up late? I don't remember hearing that, but I don't either, but I um, just wanted to put that out there because I thought maybe I missed something. <laughs> well, I mean, he, if he, you know, like I said, we said earlier, he's a typical teenager, so he will get up in the middle of the night. He, you know, it, it's hard to say. I, I personally don't remember that being said in the interview and I'm sorry. Um, and I'm not doubting it, but I mean, he's a typical teenager. He'd get up, go get snacks, and go back to his room. So he did regularly get up at night. Mom's saying he regularly got up at night. Where Summer wanted to know what's Sebastian's favorite food, drink? Is it ice cream, chips, 
<laughs> he anything is anything with sugar in it. Anything with sugar. Favorite drink is probably a Yoo-Hoo. No, he take chocolate milk over Yoo-Hoo. Oh well, okay. Well, chocolate drink, chocolate milk. As yeah. long as it's not the fat-free chocolate milk that the school switched to, because he's really upset that the school switched the chocolate milk to fat-free, and now he doesn't like it. Um, who did Sebastian love the most out of everyone? Um, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you want to how I'd answer that. But... Me one day I mean, he one may day not have had. Dad. Five minutes later, I mean, it just depends on when you ask him. I mean, if I let him do what I, if, if I take him and go do something cool, oh, I'm the hero, you know, but when I'm getting on to him, mom's the hero, you know, when dad takes him fishing, dad's the hero. So, I mean, it's, you know, he's got three parents that love him equally. He's loved and loves all his parents. I mean, but I mean, we all have our moments when we're not his favorite too. I mean. He's, he's a kid. <laughs> and True Crime Cafe with Dago says, has anyone else in the family ever threatened to have Sebastian removed or anything like that? No. Okay. Um, and does loud noises or certain smells bother him? Just curious if law enforcement approached him with sirens, will he run or melt down? He doesn't like loud noises, but they've known about that from the beginning. So, like, if it's a song he likes, he can turn the volume up. But, like, fireworks, he can't stand that kind of noise. So, he does have a sensitivity to, to sudden and loud noises, mostly. Okay. And it said that he likes to hide in small places. Small places, can you... Give me an example of like what, where, like how small. Can you elaborate on that for us? Um, so he has a he has a, a closet in his bedroom, and I mean it's not a small closet; it's it's a good sized closet. He will get over and tuck into a corner in his closet and play with his toys when he's playing with his toys or he's doing something he knows he's not supposed to. Um, it's always a pile of Legos in the corner. Yeah. I mean, it, it's not like this boy was going into a two by two by two space and and hiding. I mean, he just he liked to be in a secluded area. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Um, Beautiful sunflower says he said earlier he had his reason, and they all agreed it was best that Sebastian not be around his daughter. And now he says that wasn't the issue. Um, I'm confused by this statement. I guess I must have missed a part of that. Um, well, to clarify what he said, he said that he didn't have custody of his daughter. So that wasn't going to be an issue in regards to Sebastian going to live with his dad. That's not the reason why Sebastian was going to live with his dad was so that his daughter could come and live with them. Thank right. You. I just, I guess I'm confused by some of these questions because I feel like it's, you know, been answered. Um, let me see here. Some of these questions we have already discussed. So, some, I, mean, um, I can I can say this much: there are some screen names that I that I'm going to say sound familiar, and I'm going to swear on it. They sound very familiar of people uh -huh. I've addressed on Facebook. Um, okay. The sunflower one. I'm not going to say I'm not swearing a thousand percent on this, but I believe I've chatted with her. And okay. She asked me why I will not go and talk to J L R. Um, first off, if this is the same lady that okay. I addressed, I am not going to people, um, to go to a YouTube channel for somebody to make some money on, or I'm not seeking them out. If they want to talk to me, they know how to get in touch with me. just like everybody else. Here she is right our, here. Our ultimate goal in the end is to bring our son home. Thank you for clarifying that beautiful sunflower. 
She said, I'm speaking of prior to his second time answering that question. He changed the answer, but it's okay. I appreciate you explaining that to me. I just didn't want to, I didn't want to mess that up. Uh, whatever, the, however you were wording that question, I wanted to make sure I was being clear about what I was asking. And by the way, guys, at midnight, I cut the questions off because I don't want to keep them here all night. So, but the questions that were submitted before that, you know, we're going to wrap those up. And if, you know, if Chris is willing, we can always come back and do a part two if there's other questions that you feel like Dad, didn't you, get answered. Dad, you, yes, uh, ma'am. You got drugged through the mud for this question. So I'm going to ask it. Um, okay. <laughs> How long have you and Katie known each other? So my question to whoever's asking that is, what does that have to do with the investigation of our son? There you go. I, that was, yeah, I did get, people came for me because I didn't allow somebody to um, ask that question because I didn't think it was pertinent to Sebastian being missing. But um, well, I mean, it, it, here's it, it really has no pertinent to the investigation or the fact that our son is missing. But like I said, I'm respectful. I'm brash and I'm direct to the point to answer that person's question. I've been in uh, Sebastian's life, half of his life. Sebastian's 15. Right. I just appreciate you being willing to um, to talk with us and answer these questions. Um, now, the you know, we've we talked about the video. I just have to ask, did you mm -hmm. guys happen to see the interview on the behavioral panel uh, where they took a look at your and Katie's interview on the news? Uh, I have not. Uh, I believe the mom okay. has made some views views of it. I personally have not I have watched okay i haven't been online very much i understand I think, I think since that has been out there we really haven't done a lot of viewing of kind of that stuff we've been out there busy doing flyers posters um signs i mean just... wow but yeah okay okay and you said that he couldn't have gone out a window, that all of that was checked. And it did not appear that he had gone out a window. And do you guys have a lock on your refrigerator? I just wanted to put that to rest. On the a lock on the refrigerator? Yep. That's no. a question. Okay. No. I mean, there's an alarm on the refrigerator when you leave the door open. Yeah, I have one of those, too, that, that dings it when you dings. don't shut it all the way. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that is, uh, it looks like, you know, there's a couple more questions. Some of the questions that are being asked are actually questions that we answered um, previously in the live stream. You know, we did ask Christian, uh, Chris, a whole set of questions. And I just invite people to please be kind and rewind um, to listen to the questions that Chris and Katie were asked. Um, and we just appreciate you guys taking the time to be here uh, to talk about your son's disappearance and what you think may have happened. Because this is this is a very scary situation. And, you know, this we're 21 days into this. Now we're 22 days. Um, this is, I just can't imagine in my mind where this young man could be. Um, and you said to me, I think we had talked um, on a phone conversation and we had talked about that construction site. Um, and I did hear Seth on a interview state that the scent uh, that the dogs picked up actually led to the outside of that construction site, which backs up to your neighborhood. What can you tell us? Can you tell us anything about the, the scent dogs and where they might have tracked to and or anything of that nature. Is there any information that you need us to know about that? Um, yes, there were tracking dogs. They did pick up a scent. 
Uh, and I couldn't tell you how many number of dogs because day one, I knew of five dogs. By day eight, we had dogs from across the country coming in from North and South Carolina, Kentucky, all over the place. So I don't know how many dogs, but the scent was picked up. It does go into the construction site. Um, and then it disappears. So they don't actually know what happens. They just disappears. Okay. If there was anything that you could say to Sebastian, or if there is someone out there who is with Sebastian, is there anything that you would want to say to them right now? You mean if someone has my son? Keep it PG. I would say that this boy is loved and that he has a caring and loving home and that he belongs with us, with his family, with his parents. And that I'm never going to stop looking for him and I'm never going to stop until we're able to bring him home. For myself, Sebastian, we miss you. All three of your parents do. We all want you back home. As soon as you can, come home. If somebody has them, Please return him. Um, don't hurt him. But we do want our son back. Please. Where Summer said maybe someone's seen him playing outside. If he played outside, that's why I want to know. If he played outside, maybe someone's seen him. Uh, Sebastian wasn't very much like he didn't go outside very much. Um, most of the time, all the neighbors will tell you that if they saw him, he was taking the trash out. Um, he may have cut the grass last summer. He cut the grass every so often, but we were always home. Um, but he's not, he's not really the, I'm going to go outside just to go outside kind of kid. He preferred to play. He prefers to play inside. Well, he prefers inside and, and playgrounds. Yeah, he does love playgrounds. Catherine, I don't see any comments being deleted. Um, we're just not taking any more questions after midnight. I don't really see anyone that's been blocked or anything. But if you have a problem, you can always send me an email at duchessforthemissing at gmail.com and let me know. Uh, I've um, got to address this. I have not heard this family one time say, that he was put outside in the dark as a punishment. Oh God, no, never. <laughs> Wait, somebody is saying that we would put our son outside in the dark as punishment? Yeah, it was saying, so why put him outside in the dark as punishment? Uh, I've not heard that said. Uh, sometimes when things are said like that, that's how it, speculation and rumors get started online. He, I've not heard him say that. Who would do that? Wow. That is very interesting. Hey, Josh, with the lab, thank you for being here. Um, if there was a comment deleted, it may be because we asked for people not to discuss other creators in the chat. Um, so if someone has mentioned another creator, we ask people not to discuss other creators um, in the live stream. So that comment may have been removed, but no one... Um, has been blocked. Well, I believe um, that I can tell. So, well, I um, believe looking at a comment here, um, Michelle Macklin and Beautiful Sunflower have got some comments up here saying that I brought up another group comment, which I did. Something that was in Trevor's and something about JLR. I did bring those up. So, if, if I violated those rules, then I apologize. That was not. You know, but I was just stating no, what I've seen that's and, out there and what has been brought to and my And you're team. fine. And listen, if you want to talk to JLR, that is 
your prerogative. And if you don't want to talk to him, you're not required to. You, you don't have to be pressured into doing anything that you don't want to. Um, if he reached out to you and you didn't respond to him, I mean, that's a personal decision for you to make. And I don't really have any um, particular stance on it. You know, you're free to discuss with anybody that you feel like is going to help get the information out about your son. And that's why we're here is to talk about Sebastian and to help get his information out there. We want to stick to the factual information um, because I don't think discussing things about your previous relationship or, you know, making false accusations or just making assumptions that there aren't any facts to stand behind is helping to find Sebastian. When law enforcement tells me that somebody is a suspect or they give us more evidence to go on, then that's what I'm waiting for to happen. Um, it, it, everybody it, has the right to their own opinion and everyone's welcome to share their opinion as long as they're respectful. And that's all that I ask here on my channel. And the mods have their explicit rules and they know what to do. And, you know, and that's it. So um, if you, if you don't mind, if, if I could just say something, sure. Um, everybody out there, you know, they, oh, they've all got their assumptions and their accusations and things of that nature. Um, if you have proof, bring it to my attention, show it to me, you know, um, Please, I mean, and like I said, I'm, I'll, I'm direct, I'm brash, but I'm respectful at the same time. Um, it's not about biting people's heads off. You know, what I what I will say that I don't appreciate is how folks out there want to drag in personal family business amongst all three parents, their side of the family, my side of the family. It, it, it has no bearing on our son. You know, we're, we're a family. It's big. You're going to have disagreements. You're going to have some dislikes. Every family out there is, is got the same, you know, working through them and becoming stronger as a family. That's what makes a family a family. You know, I don't mind people have their opinions. I don't mind their assumptions. You know, respectful. I'm going to give you the respect, you know, in the end, the end result for every bit of this is the exact same to bring our son home safe and sound. And that's all we're asking. We love y'all. We pray for y'all. We got thoughts. Even if you don't like us, trust me, we still got love for you. And sometimes your questions may sound far fetched. But believe it or not, it might be something that we could look at and say, hey, what about this? But it's not going on deaf ears. I promise y'all. Um, I did see a question just now that I was actually on my list to ask you. And it was when I had asked about what Sebastian was wearing because people were saying, Why are you just now saying that it's a long sleeve black t-shirt and not a black sweatshirt? And you guys had explained to me how that transpired and it didn't get changed. You had explained to them, this is what he was wearing. But when they made the flyer, they put out the incorrect information and that you had asked them to update it, but they didn't immediately. And a lot of people were saying, well, they didn't even know what he was wearing. Tell me about that. So we, we gave the description to all the law enforcement agencies out there. They took it and listed and, and listed it. Sure. Now, keep in mind, let's think about the telephone game. You tell somebody something, they tell somebody something that goes back. And by the time it comes back around to you, it is not what you initially started with. That is basically what happened. We told them verbatim was Sebastian went to bed wearing long black pants with white stripes down the side. Um, 
a long sleeve shirt that had an image on the front could have been of one of three things, Minecraft, Star Wars, or of Halloween depiction, his favorite three things. Now, somewhere along the way, that got changed and somebody said it was a sweatshirt. Somebody said it was a hoodie. Um, somebody has said it's a t-shirt. The initial description said sweatshirt and I clarified that it was a long sleeve shirt. Hi, Seth. Thank you so much for joining the chat. It's good to see you. I appreciate you being here. Um, if you'd like to join us on panel, you're more than welcome to. We really just want to find answers and we really just want to find Sebastian. And this channel is just a place for family members to be able to share any information to clear up misinformation and to get out the information to help bring their missing child or their missing loved one home. And I appreciate you being here. We, you have so many people that are praying for Sebastian and we do have those billboards up and we're going to hopefully maybe get another billboard up, maybe a third billboard. We've had so many wonderful people in this chat to support us keeping those billboards going for another week. Um, and we're praying for all of you because this can't be easy and it's got to be very stressful. And all of these extra things that are going on can't really be helping. Um, and Angela, you can express your opinions, but we will not allow people to just be harassing or to show blatant disrespect, doxing. We don't want people to um, talk badly about other creators. Um, those are just the general chat rules that are the rules that ha are on every live stream. And we just ask people to be respectful of that. And uh, we appreciate you being here. So um, if it goes against any of those rules, the moderators are uh, there to help you answer any questions and to keep the chat a safe and friendly place to be able to discuss this case. So I appreciate you understanding. Yes, there is too many missing in Tennessee, and it's, it's very difficult for these families. It's got to be very difficult. Um, I see Angel has a question. Why did Sebastian not go to his bio dad's house the weekend he went missing? Wasn't it his bio dad's weekend? No. Do you guys want to comment? Yeah, well, I mean, we'll, we're okay to comment. And I'm, if Seth is listening, he also can, can uh, confirm this. that So they have it every other weekend. Um, and the weekend that he went missing, he was not, that was not his weekend to be at his dad's house. He was actually supposed to be at mom's house. Okay. I just appreciate you coming and speaking with us to, you know, tell us if there's, you know, to clear up things because I, I've seen all kinds of things on social media and, you know, and Trev time, I appreciate you and the lab being here. I just wanted to go through the questions, ha let the chat be able to ask their questions. Um, and of course, Crystal and Arctic Fox had questions that they wanted to ask. And um, I just appreciate Chris and Katie being willing to try to answer some of those questions, although some of them I'm not sure have a direct impact on what's happening with Sebastian going missing. Um, but I hope that it helps to clear up some of the questions that people have. Um, I did also see that um, another creator had asked a question. Um, and I think they said they actually sent you a message, Chris, um, because they wanted to know when you first heard that Sebastian had gone missing, did it ever cross your mind that, um, that Katie might have been involved? Absolutely. And I wanted you to I wanted no, you to speak to that. No, and that's fine. Absolutely not. 
I would not for I there's nothing in me, nothing I would ever think that she the mother had, had anything to do with this or the father for that matter. None of his parents, none any of us would have ever done anything to Sebastian to to do this remotely conjure up in no way. No. This boy has got so much love. It uh, that I mean that right there kind of kind of hurts me a little bit to think that somebody would think that I would suspect my wife of having ill intent and that's no. No. And I, I respect that. I respect that, Seth. I understand. And yeah, I think some of these questions are not about finding Sebastian either. Um, but these are the questions that people are here and asking. So we just wanted to get through those and hopefully be able to put that aside so that we can focus on bringing Sebastian home. Terry Dean said, had Sebastian ever played or been interested at the construction site before? No, he's never he's never gone to that construction site. Uh, we have drove around the construction site in a car, but no, he's never been on foot. He's never wandered over there. Um, I mean, I I understand where they're going with that, but no, unfortunately, there's not any chance that he would have that kind of interest. But then again, at the same time, Dog scents were found in the construction zone, um, and then they disappear. You know, I mean, it's it's hit or miss, you know. Okay. And um, you had told me that you both had, uh, when, when you're able to, you get out there and try to, to do searches. You have been putting up flyers. Um, are you planning to continue to search? In the future, are you going to organize any type of search yourself to help find him? Because there's people in the chat that are wanting to come and help. So will you be letting people know if there's going to be any other organized searches for the community? Uh, yes. I mean, we're not opposed to that. Um, okay. You know, the father, Seth, he does that all the time. We go out and do – we we don't organize big groups. Um to give you an example, like this weekend, you know, somebody's like, well, you guys were in your motorcycles. Well, yeah, we went to a motorcycle rally, a group, a spring opener, passed out flyers. You'd be surprised on how, how far and wide the, the motorcycle community can pull together and spread that word. Um, Dad, you know, Seth has worked on it and his end up in Clarksville. He's got guys that he's working with. Excuse me. We have folks down here that we work with. Um, I mean, we help people want to help. I mean, we and we ask them. They're like, "Hey, I'm going out this far. Do you have flyers?" Sure, do. We'll hand them a stack of flyers, and you know, they're out going. Seth does his part of it, and trust me, it's. I mean, it's an ongoing thing. If somebody wants to like try to put together an organized group, we're not opposed to it. Um, Trev, I just saw your comment and I wanted to say thank you. And we have some if you need them. And Seth says he does like heavy equipment too. It, it, yeah, so a little quick story. Uh, <laughs> we, I rented a mini excavator and uh, needed to use it to do a project around the house. We were doing some landscaping and... Uh, I actually put Sebastian on the equipment, explained to him how, you know, this works and whatnot like this. And he actually was able to take the bucket and put it within inches of the foundation of the house and help pull out some of the root balls without ripping out the irrigation lines in the, in the landscaping. So, I mean, he, he's good at it. He's, he's real good. I appreciate that Trev Tom to be for you to go out there and put up flyers it it really takes a team effort and i appreciate everyone that is covering sebastian um and thought criminal i did see your post of asking about the x but i don't really think the x has this doesn't really pertain to sebastian missing 
So that is the only reason why I haven't addressed that. Kinky Ad said, why not ask Katie if she suspected Chris? It's her bio son. And I think they just clarified that, that all of the parents agree. And of course, we do have Seth in chat. And you, you did say, Chris, all three of you agree that none of the parents are involved in the disappearance of Sebastian. Um Seth, if you want to comment in the chat, you certainly um, are free to 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 speak and say whatever you feel. Katie, did you? I mean, obviously, you said you weren't even in town, but Katie, did you have any thing that you suspected when this happened? Did you immediately say, "Well, um, I think so and so might have something to do with it"? Honestly, no. I mean, my husband was out of town and had been for a while, and even if he wasn't. I don't think for a second he would ever hurt him. And if his dad wanted him, he wouldn't have to take him. He'd just call and say, hey, I want to pick my son up. And I'd say, okay, what time? And, you know, the only stipulation is that we, you know, we don't miss school. So, I mean, I wouldn't have thought anything about that either because we have, you know, our own differences, but that doesn't matter. When it comes to Sebastian, we're pretty good about, you know, hey, you know, I want to have him this weekend or I've got this thing going on and like we juggle and, and change weekends sometimes if we've got something that we want to do or vice versa. So no, no. Kinky Ad said, how did Katie not notice him in the kitchen when she didn't find him in bed and then said she thought maybe he was making breakfast that your room is by the kitchen? Yes. But he liked to dip around walls and he did his little sneaky thing. I understand. The lab said, did they say why they didn't go to the vigil? Yes. So somebody asked me that before and I responded on Facebook and it's okay. So the very first vigil that was going on um, and actually I think I said there was three, and when there actually was four, they did a vigil down here at the stop sign inside of our subdivision. It was inside our neighborhood, did a small one. At the time, we were still dealing with law enforcement, and we didn't go. Then the Long Hall Baptist Church down here on Long Hall Pike, they held one. At the time, we were still with law enforcement answering questions. All three parents were. Uh, we did have a representative go and speak on our behalf. Uh, the third one, which a young lady organized, and originally they were going to try to do something here in the community without discussing it with us, without talking with anybody, uh, and all the neighbors had a concern because, like I said, it's a small community. There's no parking. There was no parking, so we addressed it to go to the high school, which they gladly moved it, but there were some security issues we got with law enforcement. So the dad did show up. Uh, we did not. Um, and then on this last one was up in Clarksville. Um, and that's up in the Clarksville area. You know, that's where dad lives. So, I mean, I think that was put on more for the dad and everything in his community up there, which supports him. Um, but, I mean, that answers that question. True Crime Cafe with Dago says, could there be anyone out there at all that has ill will toward either side of the family? Um, and then I did see someone right up above that say, well, Seth is at, works, you know, in law enforcement. Could this uh, be something like a, you know, that's coming back because he works in law enforcement? Do you have any thoughts on that? No. No. Terry Dean says parents in this situation are damned if they do and damned if they don't. Amen. The lab said, fair enough. Thanks for answering me. You're welcome, Josh. Thank you so much for dropping by. I appreciate it. I've kept you guys long enough, and I really appreciate you coming over on this live stream and being willing to have a conversation with us and being willing to answer these questions. Um, so 
if you decide that you want to come back and answer some more questions or, um, you know, please let please let me know. And we're going to continue to keep these billboards up as long as we can. And I'll continue to share information about Sebastian. And if there's anything that we can do, you have lots of people in this community that just want to help bring your son home safely. Um, please let us know how we can best support to uh, your family. And that goes for you too, Seth, if you're out there listening. Um, I can't imagine what you're going through, but just know that you have a lot of people out here that are praying for you um, and praying for Sebastian to come home safe. And I just want to thank you for your time. And I want to thank all of the members and the subscribers that donated. Um, you really mean so much um, for being here and being willing uh, to donate to keep these billboards going for Sebastian. And I just want to thank Miss Curvy and Amy in Boston, Stevie, Linda Williams, David Bryant, Devil Eyed Elvis, uh, Go Titans 82. Thank you for multiple super chats, the five cane canes. Um, thank you so very much. All of this is going to go to keeping Sebastian's billboard uh, live for another week. And um, maybe we can have another conversation. Uh, I, I do have other things going on. I work during the week, but maybe we can schedule up something um, and get some more of these questions answered. If there's anything that we haven't covered, you can always send me an email and you can always message me on Facebook Messenger if there's information that you need about this case. And it sounds like there's a lot of people that are local to you, Chris, that are very interested in Sebastian's case that want to help search, that want to hang up flyers. Um, and I think that's wonderful because it really takes a village uh, to be able to have um, people come together to help find a missing child. And we don't want this case to go cold. We want to be able to bring Sebastian home as soon as possible. So please stay in touch with me and let me know if there's anything that we can do to help um, is there anything you want to close out with, Chris, before you leave us? Um, yes. Uh, those that want to help, please feel free to reach out to me. You, you know, everybody finds me on Facebook. Send me a message. Um, like I said, there's thousands of people and there's one or two of us. And, you know, Seth, he's not really on social media that much. But so we're trying to answer as much as we can. Um but we love you guys. Thank y'all so much. Our prayers and our thoughts go out to you and your families as well. Um, Thank you. If you're able to you know, flyer and keep his face out there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We will keep sharing his flyer. And we just encourage everyone that's watching this live stream or that may be watching this live stream on the replay. If you see Sebastian's information circulating on social media, whether it's TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, or on YouTube, please share that information out because somebody might see Sebastian's face that doesn't realize that they have actually seen Sebastian and they can be able to get that information and be able to call law enforcement to say that they have seen Sebastian's face. And this is the current billboard that we have running in two separate locations near Nashville, endangered missing Sebastian Rogers. He is 15 years old. He is an autistic male. He is five feet, five inches tall, weighs 120 pounds, missing from Hendersonville, Sumner County, Tennessee. If you have any information about Sebastian, please don't hesitate. If you see something, say something. Call Sumner County Sheriff's Office at 615-451-3838, or you can reach out to the TBI at 1-800-TBI-FIND. And thank you so much, September Virgo, for being a member for four months. And thank you so much for your beautiful gift that you sent me. Um, you are such a wonderful friend, and I really appreciate you so very much. And Miss Curvy, thank you so very much. She says, praying that this sweet boy comes home and no drama delays the case. Advice, parents, pick what channels very carefully you speak on, okay, as a law advocate and bio dad in law enforcement, he knows this very well. 
Thank you, Miss Curvy. I really appreciate you, sweetie. And I will put this also towards Sebastian's um, billboard. That may take us into a second week. So I really appreciate that so very much. Duchess, um, if you don't mind, I, I personally want to reach out and say thank you to all the viewers and all the questions. doesn't matter what the question was or the comment was. Thank you. Steve and Sebastian out there, and we're hopefully going to bring them home soon. Yeah, Concern says they need boots on the ground. I have to agree. It it seems like that if we just can get enough people on the ground, surely there's going to they're going to find something. I would like to thank Chris and Katie for coming on and answering our questions and for Seth for answering some in the chat. Absolutely. Absolutely. We are very grateful for you being very transparent and just trying to offer up any information that may help bring Sebastian home safely. And we will continue to pray for your family and pray for Seth also. Um, please don't stop sharing Sebastian Rogers information, guys. Help bring Sebastian home by keeping his face out there. I hope we don't need the billboards that long either, Terry. I hope we don't. And I appreciate all of you being here. So, Chris, I'm going to let you go. I hope that you both get some rest. And um, hopefully there will be news this week. Stay in touch with me. If there's anything you need, you've got my number. Yes, ma'am. Thank you all once again Thank for everything you. that you all do. Thank Absolutely. You. You're very, very welcome. And we'll chat soon. Yes, ma'am. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. Okay, y'all please put some prayer hands and green hearts for Sebastian and his family in the chat. I'm just, I'm so worried about this, this young man. This is so important that we find him. Crystal Arctic, is there anything that you want to say before we close this out? At the end of the day, no matter if we differ in opinion on this case, we all want the same thing. We just want Sebastian home. I, I want to thank everyone for being here, especially the ones that did show respect. And let's continue to share his flyer out. Let's bring this little boy home. That's right. We're not here to solve this case. We're here to just keep Sebastian's face out there, to keep his name alive in hopes that somebody is going to see something and they're going to call law enforcement and we can be able to bring this young man home safely. So um, thank you everyone for joining us for this conversation tonight. I hope that it's answered some of your questions that you've been asking. And I appreciate everyone that joined us and for your respect um, and your kindness when you're asking questions, because you're allowed to think differently. You're allowed to have your own opinions, but we just want to be respectful of the parents. There may be things that they're not able to answer or that they just don't want to answer. We can't force people uh, to answer questions for things that they don't want to. Um, but just know that law enforcement is doing everything they can to bring Sebastian home and we have to wait for those answers. And it's hard. It's hard to be patient in these cases. Uh, but I do believe they do need more search groups. Uh, we need more people out there putting flyers on the ground and Cluminati. I really appreciate you and Trev time and any of the people that are local to this area that are willing to go out there and put up flyers and help with searches, whatever they need. Um, you have no idea how much that really means to this family and how much it means to us for, for people who cover these missing cases, for all the people that are out there, boots on the ground. Like I'm in South Carolina here in Myrtle Beach. And if a case is local to me, 
I go out and search, hang up flyers, whatever I can do. But this is in Tennessee, guys. It's not local to me. But I try to reach out to all the people because I have a lot of subscribers from Tennessee, which is why I cover cases in Tennessee. You know, because of the subscribers that come over here, they reach out to me and say, hey, can you talk about this case that's local to where I live? Um, and I just want to give a shout out to all those people who are out there supporting and doing all that they can, because we all have something we can bring to the table to help find these missing people. And it really means a lot to the families because they can't do it by themselves. So, and Malibu says, I'm towards Chattanooga and I'm spreading the word. Thank you, Malibu. Thank you. And Victoria says it's not local to her, but listen, if you're sharing it on social media, that means so much. And True Crime Cafe with Dago, I really appreciate you being here also. Yeah. Um, and that's a great question, Catherine. I've asked that before. If there's caves or tunnels, holes in the ground, I know that TBI has already requested in their um, the last update that they made. If you have a property that has caves or holes or tunnels, you know, to let TBI know so they can have a team come out there and search those. So I encourage you, if you're local to this area and you need your property be, to be searched because there's areas that you can't search yourself, all you have to do is call Sumner County or you can call TBI if you're not in Sumner County and ask them if they can come and check your property. And I'm sure they would be happy to do that. It means the world to this family. They really want Sebastian to come home safely. They love him and they care about him. Um, so I'd, guys, all, I'd also ask people, it don't have to be Tennessee because the fact is we don't know where Sebastian is. It doesn't matter what state you're in. Mm -hmm. Put up his flyers. Exactly. Thank I'm you. in Arkansas you, and I've got his flyer on the back of my truck. So. Yeah, thank you, Raven Wolf. She's in Chicago and spreading the word. Listen, it matters because we don't know all of the circumstances. You never know. You just never know. That's why it takes a village of us working together because people from all over the United States and across the world watch this channel. They watch a lot of other YouTubers that are covering this case too. So that's why it's really important to keep his information out there because somebody might see something that that triggers like, hey, I think I saw him. Or someone was just talking about that they saw somebody who looked just like him. Call that in. Let law enforcement know. There's no, What you might think is insignificant might actually be something that could break this case open. And Michelle's so right. There was another autistic boy who started walking and he walked 200 miles. Yeah, I think that was in Arizona, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, just, and apparently he wasn't a runner either, but he decided to take off and he walked 200 miles and he was found safe, y'all. 200 miles. I, I don't think I could walk two miles. <laughs> so when I think about walking 200 miles, that sounds incredible. But it can happen. They can they can literally walk 200 miles and he was found safe, y'all. So there is a chance that we can find Sebastian safe and bring him home. So I appreciate all of y'all joining me tonight. I've got a little outro. It's very short to take us out of here. It's almost 1 a.m. And I appreciate all of y'all hanging in here to uh, let us ask these uh, difficult questions and a variety of questions that people really wanted to know. And I wanted to make sure that I tried to answer uh, most of everybody's questions um, as much as possible. And I just want to thank everybody um, for all the members and everyone that sent a super chat to help keep Sebastian's billboard going. And thank you, Crystal and Arctic Fox, for joining me for this important conversation about Sebastian. Well, thank you for having me. Absolutely. I hope y'all have a good night. And thank you. Thank you for being here, Josh. And um, I appreciate y'all keeping the word out 
about Sebastian. Um, Y'all make sure you go sub up to these other creators and, and watch their live streams. A lot of these creators cover other missing cases and their missing cases are just as important as Sebastian. We have so many missing kids and missing adults right now. Um, it's insane. I mean, somebody goes missing every 40 seconds in the United yeah. States. Um, and I'm constantly having people send me, hey, can you please share this flyer? Can you make a flyer? I'm happy to do it. If you have a missing case that needs a flyer, you can email me at duchessforthemissing at gmail.com. And I'll be happy to make you a missing flyer. It's free of charge. Um or I'll be happy to make a video for a missing case that you have in your area if you just send me all of the information. And I just want to thank all of the creators on all of the social media platforms that are keeping Sebastian Rogers' information out there. Lost is not alone. That's exactly right, Timis. That's exactly right. So y'all take care. Take care of each other and be kind. Crystal, anything you want to say about being kind? I think you say it doesn't cost a thing. Yeah, it takes zero effort to be a good human being. That's Amen. Exactly right. Amen. So um, you guys have a good night and I will catch you on the next one. We'll be talking about some other missing cases soon and take care, everyone. And I'll catch you later. Bye, y'all.